Talmud, Masorah A C H A P T E R I Mishnah. If the court ruled that any one of the ritual commandments mentioned in the Torah may be transgressed, and an individual proceeded and acted through error in accordance with their ruling, whether they acted thus and he acted with them, or they acted and he acted after them, or even if they did not act and he acted, he is exempt because he relied on a ruling of the court. If, however, when the court issued an erroneous ruling, one of them who knew that they had heard or a disciple who was himself capable of deciding matters of law proceeded and acted in accordance with their ruling, whether they acted and he acted with them, or they acted and he acted after them, or they did not act and he acted, he is liable since he was not dependent upon the ruling of the court. This is the general rule. He who is in a position to rely upon himself is subject to a penalty, and only he who must depend upon the court is exempt. Amara Samuel said, A. Court is never responsible unless they ruled you are permitted. Ardimi of Nihardia said, Unless they ruled you are permitted to act, what is the reason? Because otherwise the decision is not final. Said Abbe, we also have learned the same. If he returned to his hometown and continued to teach as he had taught, he is exonerated. If, however, he issued instructions for the public to act, he is subject to the penalty. Said Arabah, we also have learned the same. If the court decided that she may be married and she went and contracted a forbidden union, she must bring an offering because the court permitted her only to marry Rubin. Said we also have learned the same. If the court ruled that any one of the ritual commandments mentioned in the Torah may be transgressed, nothing more need he said about it. Some read as follows Samuel said, A court is not responsible unless they ruled you are permitted to act. Ardimi of Nihardia said, Even if the ruling was you are permitted, the decision is. Regarded as final, but surely said Abbe, we have not so learned. If he returned to his hometown and continued to teach as he had taught, he is exonerated. If, however, he issued instructions for the public to act, he is subject to penalty. But surely said Arabah, we have not so learned. If the court decided that she may be married and she went and committed adultery, she must bring an offering because the court permitted her only to be married. But surely said Rabbah, we have not so learned. If it court ruled that any one of the ritual commandments mentioned in the Torah may be transgressed, nothing more need be said about it. And an individual proceeded and acted through error in accordance with their ruling. Let it be taught and he acted in accordance with their ruling. What need was there for through error? Rabbah replied, the addition of through error was meant to include the following case. If the court ruled that suet was permitted to be eaten and the person mistook suet for fat. And aided he is exonerated while according to their ruling implies that their actual ruling others read as follows Rabbah said only a person who acted through error namely in accordance with their ruling is exonerated but he who mistook suit for fat and aided is liable that which was obvious to Rabbah was raised by Rami Bihama as a question for Rami Bihama is he what is the law where the court ruled that suit was permitted and a person mistook it for fat and aided Rabbah replied command. Here an individual proceeded and acted through error in accordance with their ruling etc. Why should it be necessary to state through error and also in accordance with their ruling obviously to include the following case where the court ruled that suit was permitted and a person mistook suit for fat and aided he is exonerated perhaps it may be retorted our Mishnah means to exempt the person only when he acted through error namely in accordance with their ruling but when he mistook suit. For fat and aided he is liable others say that Rabbah said come and here an individual proceeded and acted through error in accordance with their ruling this surely implies that only when he acted through error namely in accordance with their ruling he is exonerated but when he mistook suit for fat and aided he is liable perhaps it was retorted our mission implies either through error or in accordance with their ruling the following are in dispute on the case mentioned if the court ruled that suit was permitted and a person mistook suit for fat and aided Rab said he is exonerated and our Yohanan said he is liable an objection was raised of the common people sin in doing excludes the apostate Arsimian B. Jose said in the name of Arsimian this is not necessary since it is written and doth through error any of all the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done and is guilty if his sin be known to him which shows that only he who repents when it becomes Known to him that he has sin brings a sacrifice for a sin he committed through error, but he who does not repent when he becomes aware of his sin does not bring a sacrifice for a sin he has committed through error. Now, if this view is tenable, surely it may be objected he would not repent even when he becomes aware of the facts. Our Papa replied, Our Yohanan holds a view that since the court would repent when the error became known to them and he also would then repent, such a person may justly be described as one who repents of his action when he becomes aware of his sin and he is therefore liable. Rabbi said, Rabbi agrees that he is not counted in the making up of the majority of the congregation. What is the reason scripture says through error, implying that no sacrifice is to be brought unless all of them shared one and the same error, whether they acted thus and he acted with them, etc. What need was there to teach all these in the case of the former section? This may be. Justified as being a climactic arrangement, not only this but also that in the later section, however, where liability is spoken of, the order surely should have been reversed. Talmud, Mas Horeth B. Talmud, Mas Horeth B. This is a case of anticlimax, this, and there is no need to say that one of them who knew that they had heard or a disciple who was himself capable of deciding matters of law, what need was there for the two robber replied, both are required since otherwise it might have been. Assumed that the reference was only to one who possesses learning and is also capable of logical reasoning and deduction, but not to one possessing learning and no capacity for logical reasoning, said Abbe to him, surely capable of deciding matters of law implies the possession of knowledge and also capacity for logical reasoning. What I mean, the other replied is this if the inference had to be derived from that, it might have been assumed that the reference is only to one who possesses learning. And is also capable of logical reasoning and deduction, but not to one possessing learning and no capacity for logical reasoning and deduction. Hence, it was taught capable of deciding matters of law, so that from the superfluous mission, it may be inferred that the reference includes even him who possesses learning only, though incapable of logical reasoning and deduction, as well as him who is only capable of logical reasoning and deduction, though he possesses no learning capable of deciding matters of law, etc. Like whom, for instance, Robert replied, for instance, like Simeon Bza and Simeon Bzoma said of A to him, in the case of such scholars, it would be a willful transgression. And according to your argument, the other replied, How will you explain the following? Wherein it was taught in doing one implies that if an individual acts on his own authority, he is liable if under the authority of the ruling of the court he is exonerated. How is this so in the case where the court? Ruled that suit was permitted and it was known to one of them or to a disciple sitting before them and capable of deciding matters of law such for instance as Simeon B.A. that they heard it might have been assumed that he is exonerated hence it was expressly taught in doing one implying that if an individual acts on his own authority he is liable if under the authority of the ruling of the court he is exonerated how then could this be possible obviously in such a case as where the scholar knew that it was prohibited but heard in the interpretation of the precept of obeying the words of the sages according to my view also it is a case where they heard in the interpretation of the precept of obeying the words of the sages this is the general rule he who is in a position to rely upon himself is subject to a penalty what does this include it includes one who usually disregards the decisions of the court he who must depend upon the court includes a case where the Court issued a decision and when they discovered that they heard they retracted but this surely is explicitly stated it was first stated here and later it was amplified Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel this is the view of Arjuna but the sages maintain that an individual who acted in accordance with an erroneous ruling of the court is liable which statement of Arjuna is referred to it was taught if any one person seen through error in doing behold there are three limitations to indicate that only he who acts on his own authority is liable but he who acts on the authority of the ruling of the court is exonerated which statement of the rabbis it was taught lest it be said that a minority of the congregation who committed a sin are subject to the obligation of a sacrifice because the court does not bring a bullock on their account but a majority of the congregation who had committed a sin should be exempt because the court brings a bullock on their account. Scripture expressly stated of the common people to indicate that even if a majority of them or all of them now in what circumstances was the sin spoken of committed if it be suggested through error in action how it may be asked does the court enter at all into the question when the commission of the sin was not on the authority of the ruling of the court does then a court bring a sacrifice when the commission of the sin was not under the authority of the ruling if however it be suggested that the sin had been committed under the authority of the ruling of the court surely it may
Consequently, since the attempt has not been made first to prove that a minority is liable when sinning through error of action and only finally to prove that a majority also is liable when sinning through error of action, it must be concluded that a minority committing a sin under the ruling of the court are liable to bring a lamb or a goat, and likewise when they committed the sin under no authority from the ruling of the court through error of action, they are also liable. Consider, however, this both areas have been taught anonymously once then is it proved that the first one represents the view of Arjuna and the last that of the rabbis might not the reverse be suggested who has been heard to make an exposition on limitations in such a manner surely it was Arjuna for it has been taught Arjuna said Talmud, Mas Horeth that this is the law of the burnt offering behold these are three exclusions and if preferred I might say the statement beginning lest it be said cannot be attributed to Arjuna for in it was taught where a majority of the congregation committed a sin the court brings a bullock on their account while Arjuna had said the congregation only have to bring the sacrifice but not the court as we learned Arjuna said seven tribes who committed a sin bring seven bullocks are nominal however said in the name of Samuel this is the view of Armadir but the sages maintain that an individual who acted in accordance with an erroneous ruling of it Court is liable which statement of Armadir and which of the rabbis it was taught if they had ruled and acted accordingly Armadir exonerates them and the sages consider them liable now who are those that acted if the court be suggested what it may be retorted is the reason of the rabbis who consider them liable surely it was taught since it might have been assumed that a court who issued an erroneous ruling and acted accordingly are liable it was expressly taught the assembly and do indicate that action depends on the assembly and ruling depends on the court if again it be suggested that the meaning is that the court ruled and the majority of the congregation acted accordingly the question arises what is the reason why Armadir exonerates them must it not then be concluded that the meaning is that the court ruled and the minority of the congregation acted accordingly and that the principle underlying their dispute is the following the master holds that an individual who Acted under the authority of the ruling of the court is exonerated, and the masters hold that an individual who acted under the authority of the ruling of the court is liable. Our Papa, however, said all agree that an individual who acted under the authority of the court's ruling is exonerated, but they differ on the question whether the court is counted in the making up of a majority of the congregation. The masters hold that the court is counted in the making of a majority of the congregation, and the master holds that the court is not to be counted in making up a majority of the congregation. And if preferred, I might say that the meaning is that the court ruled and a majority of the congregation acted accordingly. And by sages was meant our Simeon, who stated that both the congregation and the court bring a sin offering. And if you prefer, I might say that they differ in the case where one tribe acted in accordance with the ruling of its own court, and by sages Arjuna was meant for it. Was taught a tribe that acted on the authority of an erroneous ruling of its court that tribe is liable, and if you prefer, I might say that the dispute relates to such a case as where the sin was committed by six tribes who formed a majority of the congregation, or by seven tribes, although they did not form a majority of the congregation. And the anonymous author of Arbaritha is Arsimian B. Eliezer, for it was taught Arsimian B. Eliezer said in his name six tribes who form a majority of the congregation, or seven tribes, although they do not form a majority of the congregation who have committed a sin, are liable to bring a sin offering. R.C. said in the case of an erroneous ruling of the court, the majority of the inhabitants of the land of Israel are to be taken into account, for it is said so Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entrance of Hamath unto the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days. Even fourteen days now consider it is written and all Israel with him a great congregation what need was there for from the entrance of Hamath unto the brook of Egypt from this it may be inferred that only these are included in the congregation but those are not it is obvious that the case where a majority has been reduced to a minority is a matter of dispute between Arsimian and the rabbis what however is the lower a minority has become the majority do Arsimian and the rabbis differ. In this case also Arsimian who is guided by the status of the person at the time of the discovery of the sin holding them liable and the rabbis who are guided by the status of the person at the time of the commission of the sin exonerating them or not how could such a thing be imagined it might well be said that Arsimian was heard to be guided by the time of the discovery of the sin also was he heard however to be guided by the time of the discovery alone for had that been it. Case they should have brought their offering according to their present status. Consequently, it must be concluded that Arsimian requires both commission of the sin and its discovery. The question was raised: What is the lower the court ruled that so it was permitted, and a minority of the congregation acted accordingly? And after the court had withdrawn their decision and again issued a similar ruling, another minority acted accordingly. Are we to say since this is a case of two distinct spells of awareness, they do not combine, or perhaps since both are concerned with suit, they combine? And if some ground could be found for the decision that since both are concerned with suit, they combine, the question arises: What is the lower? One minority was involved in the forbidden fat of the mind, and another minority in the forbidden fat of the small bowels. Is it certain that in these cases, since the prohibitions are derived from two distinct texts, they do not combine, or? Perhaps since both are concerned with forbidden fat they combine and if some ground should be for the decision that since the two kinds bear the name of forbidden fat they combine the question may be asked what is the lower one minority was involved in the eating of suet and another minority in that of blood is it certain that in this case since these are two distinct prohibitions they do not combine or perhaps since the same kind of sacrifice has to be brought in both cases they combine and if some ground could be found for the decision that since the same kind of sacrifice has to be brought in both cases they combine the question might be asked what is the lower one minority was involved in the eating of suet and another minority in idolatry is it certain that in this case since neither the prohibitions nor the sacrifices are alike they are not to be combined or perhaps since the punishment in both cases is that of correct they are to be Combined these questions remain undecided the question was raised what is the lower a court ruled that suit was permitted and a minority of the congregation acted accordingly and the members of that court died and another court that was appointed also issued a similar ruling and another minority acted in accordance with that ruling according to him who stated that the court brings the sacrifice no question arises for surely they are no more in existence the question however arises what is the law according to him who stated that the congregation bring the sacrifice the congregation surely exists Talmud Mas Horeb B or is it perhaps necessary to have in the case of both minorities the ruling of the court that ruled in the first instance this is undecided our Jonathan said where a hundred judges sat down to consider a decision they are not liable unless all of them arrived at the same erroneous decision for it is said and if the whole congregation of Israel Shalir which implies that they must all hear said Arhuna son of Hashai logical deduction leads to the same conclusion for throughout the Torah there is an established rule that a majority is like the whole and yet it was written here the whole congregation and since such is the case it must be concluded that even if there were a hundred we learned when the court issued an erroneous ruling and one of them knew that they had heard or a disciple who was himself capable of deciding matters of law proceeded and acted in accordance with their ruling whether they acted and he acted with them or they acted and he acted after them or they did not act and he acted he is liable since he was not dependent upon the ruling of the court from this it follows that only that person is liable but another is exempt but why the decision surely was not unanimous here it is a case where that person nodded with his head come and here if the court issued a ruling and one of them knew that they heard and said to them you are mistaken they are exempt the reason and why they are exempt is because he said to them you are mistaken had he however remained silent they would have been liable and their decision would have been regarded as unanimous but why surely they did not all arrive at the same decision it may be answered that here also it is a case where he nodded with his head our measure she raised an objection our rabbis relied upon the words of our Simeon B. Gamaliel and upon the words of our Eliezer the son of our Zadok, who said no law may be imposed upon the public unless a majority of the people can endure it and our Adabi Abba said what scriptural proof is there for this view you are cursed with a curse yet you rob me even this whole nation now surely it is written here this whole nation and yet a majority is regarded as a whole is not this a refutation of the view of our Jonathan this is a refutation why then did the all merciful say the whole congregation it is this that was meant where they are all present the decision is valid but if not their decision is invalid our Joshua said when ten sit in judgment the responsibility rests upon all of them is not
Uprooted if they said, for example, that the law concerning the menstruant is not found in the Torah, or the law concerning the Sabbath is not found in the Torah, or the law concerning idolatry is not found in the Torah, they are exempt. If, however, they ruled that a part of a commandment was to be annulled and a part retained, they are liable. How is this so? If they said the law concerning the menstruant occurs in the Torah, but if a man has intercourse with a woman that awaits a day, corresponding to a day, he is exempt, or that the law concerning the Sabbath occurs in the Torah, but if a man carries anything from a private domain to a public domain, he is exempt, or that the law of idolatry occurs in the Torah, but if a man only bows down to an idol, he is exempt, they are liable. For scripture says, and if something be hit something but not the entire principle, Gemara Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, what is our Simeon's reason because he acted on the authority of the court? Others say that Rab Judah said in the name of Rab Arsimian used to say that in the case of any ruling of the court which has spread to a majority of the congregation if an individual acted according to it he is exempt for he ruling was given for the purpose of distinguishing between one who acts in error and one acting presumptuously an objection was raised the bullet required when a matter was hit from the congregation and the goats of atonement for idolatry are to be purchased from a collection made for the purpose these are the words of Arsimian Rab Judah said they are taken from the funds of the temple treasury now why since a collection is made for the purchase of the sacrifices the facts became known if you wish I might say it is a case for instance where the object of the collection was not stated and if you prefer I might say in the case for instance where he was not in town and if you prefer I might say Rab holds the same view as the other tana in whose name they Reverse was taught a collection is made for the occasion. These are the words of Arjuna. Our Simeon said they are taken from the funds of the temple treasury. It was taught our mayor declares him liable and our Simeon exonerates him. Our Eliezer said doubtful in the name of Simicus. It was said suspended. Said our Johan and the difference between them is the obligation to bring an example. We said our Zara as to an analogy in respect of the view of our Eliezer to what may the thing be compared to the case of a man who ate something about which it is doubtful whether it was suet or fat who when it becomes known to him brings a guilt offering Talmud. Mas Horeate and there is no need to say that this is so according to him who holds that the public bring the offering since in that case the matter is well known but even according to him who holds that the court brings the sacrifice in which case the matter is not well known the example we must be brought because had he inquired he would have been told our Jose B. Abin others say our Jose B. Zibita said as to an analogy in respect of the view of Simicus to what may the thing be compared to the case of a man who brought an offering for his atonement at twilight when there was doubt whether it was still day and his atonement was effective or night has already fallen and his atonement was not effective who does not bring an ashamtalibi and there is no need to say that this is so according to him who holds that the court bring the sacrifice since in that case the matter is not sufficiently known but even according to him who holds that the public bring the sacrifice in which case the matter is well known and people could have told him this case is nevertheless the same as that of doubt whether it was still day or night has already fallen for even if he had wished to ask he might not have found anyone who could tell him said Ben to him how does such a person differ from one who remains etc. our Akibah surely Answered Ben Eze, well Robert replied the difference between them is the case of one who started on a journey according to Ben Eze, he is liable because he is still at home according to our Akiba he is exempt since he has already started on his journey if the court ruled that an entire principle was to be uprooted our rabbis taught and something be hid but not when an entire commandment be uprooted how one might assume that if they said for example that the law concerning the menstruation is not found in the Torah or the law concerning the Sabbath is not found in the Torah or the law concerning idolatry is not found in the Torah they are liable hence it was expressly stated and something be hid but not when an entire commandment he hid they are consequently exempt one might assume however that if they said the law concerning the menstruation occurs in the Torah but if a man has intercourse with a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day is exempt or that the law Concerning the Sabbath occurs in the Torah, but if a man carries anything from a private domain into a public domain, he is exempt, or that the law concerning idolatry occurs in the Torah, but if a man only bows down to an idol, he is exempt, they are exempt, hence it was expressly stated, and something he had, but not the entire principle. The master said one might assume that they are exempt, but it may be asked if when the ruling was that part of a commandment be retained and a part annulled. They are exempt, and when an entire principle be uprooted, they are also exempt. In what case then would they be liable? The Tan of Ad raised his question, thus it might have been assumed that Dabar means the entire commandment, hence it was expressly said, and something be hid. How does this prove it? Ola replied in this text read, and a part of a thing was hid. Hezekiah replied, Scripture says, and do any of the commandments which implies of the commandments, but not all the commandments does not. Commandments denote the plural are Naman Bilsasi replied it is written commandment Arashi replied Dabar here is to be deduced from Dabar mentioned in the case of a rebellious elder for concerning a rebellious elder it was written if there arise a matter too hard for thee thou shalt not turn aside from the sentence which they shall declare unto thee to the right hand nor to the left hand as in the case of the rebellious elder the meaning is a part of the thing and not all the things so in the case of an erroneous ruling of a court a part of the thing is meant and not an entire principle Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the court is liable only when they rule concerning a prohibition which the Sadducees do not admit but if concerning a prohibition which the Sadducees admit they are exempt what is the reason it is a matter which anyone can learn at school we learned the law concerning the menstruant occurs in the Torah but if a man has intercourse with a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day he is exempt but why surely the law concerning a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day is mentioned in the scriptures and she shall number to herself teaches that she counts one day for one day they might rule that the first stage of contact is permitted and only the consummation of coition is forbidden surely this also is written in the scriptures he hath made naked her fountain they might rule that in the natural way it is forbidden in an unnatural way it is permitted but surely it is written as with womankind they might rule that in the natural way even the first stage of contact is forbidden in the unnatural way however consummation of coition only is forbidden but the first stage of contact is permitted if so the same might apply even to the case of a menstruant also the fact however is that the ruling might have permitted even in the natural way alleging that the prohibition of the first stage has reference to a Menstruant woman only, and if you prefer, I might say the ruling may have been that a woman is not regarded as a Zabah except during the daytime because it is written all the days of her issue. We learned the law concerning the Sabbath occurs in the Torah, but if a man carries anything from a private domain into a public domain is exempt, etc. But why surely the prohibition of carrying from one domain into another is mentioned in the scriptures? Neither carry forth the burden out of your houses. On the Sabbath day, they ruled that carrying out alone is prohibited, but bringing in is permitted, and if you prefer, I might say they ruled that only carrying out and bringing in is prohibited, but handing across and throwing is permitted. We learned the law concerning idolatry occurs in the Torah, but if a man only bows down to an idol, he is exempt, etc. But why the case of him who bows down is certainly mentioned in the scriptures, for it is written, Thou shalt bow down to no other god day. Ruled that bowing down is prohibited only when performed in the usual manner, but if in an unusual manner it is permitted, and if you prefer, I might say they ruled that bowing itself in a natural manner is only then prohibited when the hands and the feet are stretched out, but bowing without stretching out the hands and the feet is permitted. Talmud, Mas Horeb B. R. Joseph inquired what is the law where the court ruled that bowing is not forbidden on the Sabbath? Is it assumed that as they had admitted the whole law, the ruling is deemed to be a partial annulment and a partial retention of a law, or perhaps since they have uprooted altogether the law of plowing, it is deemed to be an uprooting of an entire principle. Come and bear the law concerning the menstruant occurs in the Torah, but if a man has intercourse with a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day, he is exempt, they are liable, but why surely the law concerning a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day has been uprooted completely. Our Joseph can reply that the law of a woman that awaits a day corresponding to a day that has been mentioned is to be explained as above. Come and bear the law concerning the Sabbath occurs in the Torah. But if a man carries anything from a private domain into a public domain, he is exempt. They are liable. But why surely the law concerning carrying
are mistaken or if the muffla of the cord was not present or if one of them was a proselyte or a bastard or a nathan or too old to have children they are exonerated for congregation was mentioned here and congregation was mentioned further on as congregation further on refers to men ali of whom must be capable of deciding matters of law so in the case of congregation mentioned here the ruling is invalid unless they are all capable of deciding matters of law gamara or if the muffla of the cord was not present whence is this derived arshi's hate replied and so it was taught by the school of our ishmael why has it been said that a court that ruled concerning a prohibition which the sadducees admit are exempt because they should have learned and did not learn in the case of the absence of the muffla of the court they are also exempt because they should have learned and did not learn congregation was mentioned here and congregation was mentioned further in unless they are all Capable of deciding matters of law and whence is this derived therefore are his dasat scripture states that they may stand there with thee with thee implies such as are like thee might it not be suggested that with thee has reference to the divine presence but said our and be Isaac scripture states and they shall bear the burden with thee with thee implies such as are like thee mission if the court issued a wrong decision unwittingly and all the people acted unwittingly accordingly a bullet must be brought if the court ruled willfully and the people acted unwillingly accordingly a lamb or a goat must be brought if the court ruled unwillingly and the people acted willingly accordingly they are exempt Yamara if the court ruled unwittingly and the people acted willfully they are exempt from this it follows that one acting unwittingly though in a way similar to one acting willfully is liable and how is this to be imagined when e.g. the court ruled that so it was Permitted and a man mistook it for fat and ate it made it then he suggested that this answers ran behind his inquiry he can tell you because in the first clause it was taught if the court ruled willfully and the people acted unwittingly it was also taught in the final clause if the court ruled unwittingly and the people acted willfully mission if the court issued an erroneous ruling and all the people or a majority of them acted accordingly a bullock must be brought and in the case of idolatry a buttock or a goat are to be brought these are the words of our mayor our Judah said the twelve tribes bring twelve bullocks and in respect of idolatry twelve bullocks and twelve goats Talmud Mas Horeb they are Simeon said thirteen bullocks and in respect of idolatry thirteen bullocks and thirteen goats a bullock and a goat for each tribe and a bullock and a goat for the court if the court ruled erroneously and seven tribes or a majority of them acted accordingly a bullock is to be Brought and in respect of idolatry, a bullock and a goat must be brought. These are the words of our Mayor Arjuna said the seven tribes who sinned must bring seven bullocks, and the rest of the tribes who did not sin must bring bullock s in their account, because even those who did not sin must bring offerings on account of these who sinned. Our Simeon said eight bullocks, and in respect of idolatry, eight bullocks and eight goats, a bullock and a goat for every tribe, and a bullock and a goat for the court. If the court of one of the tribes ruled erroneously, and that tribe acted accordingly, that tribe is liable, but all the other tribes are exempt. These are the words of Arjuna, but the sages say no liability is incurred except as a result of the rulings of the Supreme Court only for it is stated, and if the whole congregation of Israel shall hear, but not the congregation of one particular tribe, Gemara, our rabbis taught it might have been assumed that if it had come to the knowledge of it. Court that a ruling of theirs was erroneous and they had forgotten what the ruling was they are liable hence it was expressly stated when the salt was known implying not however when only those who sinned were known were and they have sinned implies that if two tribes had sinned they must bring two bullocks if three had sinned three have to be brought but is it not possible that this only means that if two individuals had sinned they bring two bullocks if three had sinned they bring three it was expressly stated the congregation showing that only a congregation is liable and that every congregation is liable how if two tribes sinned they bring two bullocks if seven sinned they bring seven and also the other tribes who did not sin bring each a bullock on account of the former because even those who had not sinned must bring sin offerings because of those who sinned hence scripture stated congregation in order to impose the obligation upon every congregation these are the words of Arjuna our Simeon said if seven tribes sin they bring seven bullocks and the court also brings a bullock on account of them for congregation was mentioned below and congregation was also mentioned above as congregation that was mentioned above means both the court and the congregation so congregation that was mentioned below means both the court and the congregation our mayor said if seven tribes had sinned the court brings a bullock on their account but they themselves are exempt for congregation was mentioned below and congregation was mentioned above as congregation that was mentioned above refers to the court and not to the people so congregation that was mentioned below refers to the court and not to the people our Simeon B. Eliezer said in his name if six tribes had sinned and they represent a majority of the people or seven although they do not represent a majority of the people they bring a bullock the master said when the sin was known implying not however when only those who sinned were known who is the author of the statement Rab Judah said in the name of Rab others say Rabba it is not our Eliezer for it was taught our Eliezer said whatever your assumption he must bring a sin offering for it backslash he ate the suet he is liable and if he ate the nut harvey is also liable our Ashi said it may even be said to be our Eliezer for here the case is different since it is written when the sin wherein they have sinned is known but surely there also it is written if he sin wherein he has sinned be known to him that is required for the purpose of excluding the case of one who performed a forbidden act while his mention was to perform a different act what is the reason of our Judah he holds the opinion that congregation was written four times congregation the congregation congregation the congregation one of these is to indicate backslash at the obligation bring offering falls on every congregation one is to indicate that the ruling depends on the court and it Action depends on the congregation one is to indicate attraction and one has reference to a tribe that acted in accordance with the erroneous ruling of its own court and our Simeon maintains that congregation was written three times the congregation congregation the congregation because the expression from the eyes of the congregation is the usual form of biblical speech as people say from the eyes of so and so one of these is to indicate that the obligation to bring an offering falls on every congregation and the other two are required for the following deduction congregation was mentioned below and congregation was mentioned above as below the references to the court together with the congregation so here also it refers to the court together with the congregation and our mayor makes no exposition on congregation the congregation consequently congregation was written only twice and both are required for the following deduction congregation was mentioned below and congregation was Mentioned above as below the references to the court and not to the congregation, so here also the references to the court and not to the congregation as to our Simeon B. Eliezer. What is his reason? It is written and it shall be it from the eyes of the congregation, which clearly refers to a minority since it is written from the eyes, but it is also written for in the respect of all the people it was done in error, which indicates that the reference is only to a majority and not to a minority. How? Then are these contradictory deductions to be reconciled if the sin was committed by six tribes who represent the majority of the congregation or by seven, even though they do not comprise a majority of the congregation, they are liable Talmud, Mas Horeb B. And whence does our Simeon and our Mayor infer that the ruling depends on the court and the action depends on the congregation? Have a replied for scripture stated and it shall be it from the eyes of the congregation the sin be committed. Unwittingly Rabbah said it is inferred from in respect of all the people it was done in error and both texts are required for if the all merciful had written only and it shall be if from the eyes of the congregation the sin be committed unwittingly it might have been assumed that the reference is even to a minority hence it was written in respect of all the people it was done in error and if only in respect of all the people it was done in error had been written it might have been assumed that there is no obligation unless the court committed the sin together with the majority hence it was written did it shall be if from the eyes of the congregation the sin be committed unwittingly but surely both these texts speak rather of idolatry from the eyes is inferred from the other expression from the eyes if the court of one etc the question was raised where one tribe acted on the erroneous ruling of the supreme court to the other tribes according to the view of Arjuna bring sin Offerings or not is it assumed that only where seven tribes have sinned do the other tribes bring sin offerings together with them because they constitute a majority but not where one tribe only had sinned since it does not constitute a majority or is there perhaps no difference come in here what do they bring one bullock our Simeon said two bullocks now under what circumstances if it be suggested where seven tribes had sinned it might be retorted our Simeon surely requires in such a he's eight bullocks if again it be suggested where one tribe had sinned it may
Court, even the other tribes are liable. This proves it said Arashi. This may also be deduced from our mission, for it was taught and that tribe acted accordingly. That tribe is liable, but all the other tribes are exempt. What need was there for the statement the other tribes are exempt when it was stated that tribe is liable? Surely, since it was stated that tribe is liable, it is obvious that the other tribes are exempt. This consequently teaches us the following that only when one tribe acted on the ruling of its own court are the other tribes exempt. But if on the ruling of the Supreme Court, even the other tribes are liable, this proves that the question was raised Does one tribe who acted on the erroneous ruling of the Supreme Court bring a sin offering according to our Simeon or not come and hear what do they bring? One bullock, our Simeon said two bullocks. Now, under what circumstances, if it be suggested that seven tribes had sinned, it may be retorted that in such a case, not two bullocks. But eight bullocks are required, consequently, it must be a case where one tribe had sinned, but it may be asked under what authority if on the ruling of its own court our Simeon surely does not in such a case admit liability. Consequently, it must be a case of a tribe acting under the ruling of the Supreme Court, who however is to be understood to be the first tenor. If it be suggested our mayor be surely it may be asked requires a majority of our Judah, surely he holds that other tribes also must bring. Consequently, it must be the view of our Simeon B. Eliezer, and as it has been taught, come and here, but the sages say one is never liable except when acting on a ruling of the Supreme Court. Now who are the sages? If it be suggested our mayor surely it may be retorted, be requires a majority. Consequently, it must represent the view of our Simeon. This proves it and whence do our Judah and our Simeon infer that one tribe is called congregation, it may be replied because it is written in Jehoshaphat. Stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. What is meant by new Yohanan replied they issued new regulations ordaining that an unclean man who bathed during the day must not enter the camp of the Levites. Arahabi Jacob demurred. How does this prove it? Is it not possible that Jerusalem is different since Benjamin also was there? But said Arahabi Jacob because it is written and he said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee. And I will make of thee a congregation of peoples, but who was born to him at that time only Benjamin. Consequently, it must be concluded that the all merciful said thus another congregation will now be born unto thee, said Arshaba to Arkahana. Is it not possible that the all merciful said to him thus when Benjamin will have been born to you there will be twelve tribes so that you might then be called congregation? He said to him, Would twelve tribes then be called congregation while eleven tribes? Would not be called congregation, it was taught. Our Simeon said, What need was there for stating, and a second young bullet shalt thou take for a sin offering? If it is to teach that there were two, surely it may be pointed out it has already been stated, and he shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord. But the purpose of the statement is this, as it might have been assumed that the sin offering was to be eaten by the Levites, it was expressly stated. And a second young bullet implying that it is second to the burnt offering, as the burnt offering must not be eaten. Talmud, Mas Horeth, so must not the sin offering be eaten. Similarly, said Arhose, the children of the captivity that were come out of exile offered burnt offerings unto the God of Israel. Twelve bullets, all this was a burnt offering. Can it be imagined that all this was a burnt offering is to be taken literally? Is it possible for a sin offering to be a burnt offering? But this is the meaning all this was like a burnt offering as a burnt offering must not be eaten so were those sin offerings not to be eaten for it was taught our Judah said they brought them for the sin of idolatry furthermore Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel they brought them for the sin of idolatry that had been committed in the days of Zedekiah according to our Judah one can well understand these twelve sin offerings to be possible in the case for example where the sin was committed by twelve tribes who must bring twelve goats or again where the sin was committed by seven tribes where others must bring offerings on account of them according to our Simeon also this is possible in the case for example where the sin was committed by eleven tribes who bring eleven goats the twelfth being that of the court according to our mayor however who said that the court and not the congregation bring the sin offering how could the bringing of twelve offerings be possible in the case for Instance where they sinned and sinned again and again unto the twelfth time, but surely those who had committed the sin were dead. Our Papa replied, The tradition that a sin offering, the owner of which died, must be left to die, is applicable only to the offering of an individual, but not to that of a congregation, because a congregation does not die. Whence does our Papa derive this law? If it be suggested from the scriptural text, instead of thy fathers shall be thy sons, if so, it may be asked this. Should apply to the offering of an individual also, but our Papa draws his inference from the goat of the new moon, concerning which the All Merciful said that it was to be brought from the funds of the temple treasury, but surely some of Israel had died. How then could those who survived bring the new moon sin offering from this? It must consequently be inferred that a sin offering of the congregation whose owner's bad died may be offered. Are these at all alike in the case of the goat for the New moon it is possible that none of the congregation bad died but here the owners had certainly died our papa's proof however is derived from here because it is written forgive O Lord that people Israel whom thou hast redeemed which implies that this offering is fit to atone even for those who departed from Egypt for it is written whom thou hast redeemed is this however a proper analogy there they were all present and since the heifer atones for the living it may also atone for the dead. Here however were there any survivors yes there were indeed for it is written but many of the priests and levites and heads of fathers houses etc is it not possible that they were only a minority and not a majority surely it is written so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people and the noise was heard afar off were they not however willful sinners that was a temporary measure this may also be arrived at by reasoning for. Should this not be granted on whose behalf it may be asked were the ninety and six rams and seventy and seven lambs but it must be granted that it was a temporary measure in this respect also it must have been a temporary measure our rabbis taught if one of the congregation died they are still liable if one of the court they are exempt who is the author of the statement are his in the name of our Zerah, in the name of our Jeremiah in the name of Rab said it is our mayor who maintains that the court and not the congregation bring the sin offering hence when one of the congregation dies they are still liable since all the members of the court are alive if however one of the court dies they are exempt because it is then a sin offering one of whose joint owners died and for this reason they are exempt our Joseph the let the statement be established in accordance with the view of our Simeon who maintains that the court together with the congregation bring the sin offering hence when one of the congregation dies they are still liable because a congregation does not die if one of the court dies they are exempt for the reason given because it is a sin offering one of whose joint owners died Abbe said to him we have heard our Simeon say that a sin offering in joint ownership is not to be left to die for it was taught if the bullet and the goat of the day of atonement were lost and others were set aside in their stead all these must be left to die so our Judah our Eleazar and our Simeon said they shall be left to the pasture because no congregational sin offering may be left to die said our Joseph to him do you speak of priests priests are different because they are called congregation for it is written and he shall make atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation Talmud Mas Horeth B if so however let them also bring a bullet in the case of an erroneous ruling and if it be said that this is really the case then there would be more Tribes, but said Arah son of our Jacob, the tribe of Levi is not called congregation, for it is written, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a congregation of peoples, etc. He who has a possession is designated congregation, but he who has no possession is not designated congregation. If so, there would be less than twelve tribes. Have a replied Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Simeon shall be mine, said Rabba, but surely it is written, They shall be called after the name of their brethren at their inheritance, which shows that they were compared only in regard to inheritance, but not in any other respect. Were they not surely they were also separated when mentioned in connection with the banners? Their campings were like their possessions in order to show respect to their banners, but surely they were also separated in respect of their princes. That was done in order to show honor to the princes, as it was taught Solomon celebrated seven days of. Dedication What reason did Moses have for celebrating twelve days of dedication in order to show honor to the princes what becomes of that come and hear that which has been taught our Simeon said the following five kinds of sin offerings are to be left to die the young of a sin offering the exchange of a sin offering a sin offering whose owner
which is possible be deduced from that which is impossible are Simeon received the tradition in regard to the five kinds of sin offering that they must be left to die from one common source chapteri mission an anointed high priest who made a decision for himself through error and acted unwittingly accordingly must bring a sin offering of a bullock if however he made the decision through error but acted upon it willfully or made it willfully but acted upon it unwittingly he is exempt for a decision the high priest made for himself is like a ruling issued by the court to the congregation Gemara through error and acted unwittingly accordingly must bring a sin offering of a bullock is not this obvious have a reply the case dealt with here is one for example where he made a decision and forgot on what ground his decision had been made and at the time of his action he declared I am acting on the strength of my decision in view of the fact that in such a case it might be assumed that since had he recollected he might have retracted he is like a willful sinner and therefore not liable to a sin offering hence it was taught that it is not so or made it willfully but acted upon it unwittingly etc. Whence these words for our rabbis taught so as to bring guilt upon the people proves that the anointed high priest is like the congregation could not this be arrived at by deduction Talmud, Mas or if a congregation it might be argued is excluded from the law relating to an individual and the anointed high priest is excluded from the law relating to an individual as the congregation is only liable to bring a sin offering where there was ignorance of the law together with error in action so an anointed high priest should only be liable where there was ignorance of the law together with error in action or it might be argued thus a ruler is excluded from the law relating to an individual and an anointed high priest is excluded from the law relating to an Individual as a ruler brings a sin offering where there was only error in action without ignorance of the law. So an anointed high priest should bring a sin offering where there was error in action without ignorance of the law. Let us then see whom he more resembles. The congregation brings a bullet but does not bring an ashamed and an anointed high priest brings a bullet and does not bring an ashamed as the congregation is liable to a sin offering only where there was ignorance of it. Law together with error in action. So an anointed high priest should be liable only where there was ignorance of the law together with error in action or argue thus a ruler brings a goat for the sin of idolatry and also brings an ashamed and an anointed high priest brings a goat for idolatry and also an ashamed as a ruler brings a sin offering where there was error in action only so the anointed high priest brings a sin offering where there was error in action only hence it was. Definitely stated so as to bring build upon the people to show that an anointed high priest is like the congregation as the congregation bring a sin offering only where there was ignorance of the law together with error in action so the anointed high priest brings a sin offering only where there was ignorance of the law together with error in action since it might be suggested that as in the case of a congregation if the court ruled and the congregation acted in accordance with their decision they are liable so in the case of an anointed high priest where he ruled and they acted in accordance with his ruling he is also liable it was therefore definitely stated then let him offer for his sin which he has sinned which shows that he brings a sin offering for his own sin only and that he does not bring a sin offering for the sins of others the master said an anointed high priest brings a bullock and does not bring an ashamed to is it deduced that he does not bring an Ashamed to for it is written, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning the error which he committed, which shows that only he who sin and error are alike brings an Ashamed to but not an anointed high priest whose error and sin are not alike, for it is written so as to bring guilt upon the people, which shows that an anointed high priest is like the congregation. Did he not, however, speak at that point on the assumption that so as to bring guilt upon the people had not been written? But the fact is that the mention of guilt offering is irrelevant. Mission if the anointed high priest gave an erroneous decision alone and acted accordingly alone, he mar his atonement alone. If he gave his ruling together with the court of the congregation and acted accordingly together with the congregation, he makes his atonement together with the congregation. The court is not liable unless they rule to an all part of a commandment and to retain a part of it, and so it is with the high priest nor are they liable for idolatry unless they rule to annul the law in part and to retain it in part tomorrow whence are these laws derived from that which our rabbis taught it might have been assumed that if he ruled together with the court of the congregation and acted together with the congregation he must bring a bullock independently this being arrived at by the following argument a ruler is excluded from the law relating to an individual and an anointed high priest is excluded from the law relating to an individual if the argument then be advanced that as a ruler if he committed a sin alone brings his offering alone and if he committed the sin together with the congregation he makes atonement together with the congregation so in the case of a high priest if he sinned alone he must bring a sin offering alone and if he sinned together with the congregation he must make his atonement together with the congregation it can be retorted no if this Applies to the ruler who makes his atonement together with the congregation on the day of atonement must it also apply to an anointed high priest who does not make his atonement together with the congregation on the day of atonement consequently since his atonement is not made together with the congregation on the day of atonement it might have been assumed that he must bring a bullock as a sin offering independently hence it was expressly stated for his sin which he has sinned how is this to be understood if he sinned alone he brings his sin offering alone and if he sinned together with the congregation he makes his atonement together with the congregation how is this to be imagined it be suggested that he is a muffling and they are not muffling is it not obvious that he must make his atonement alone since their ruling has no legal force and every individual must bring a lamb or a goat and if it be suggested that they are muffling and he is not a muffler why should he make his Atonement alone is ruling surely has no legal force Talmud, Mas Horeth B. R. Papa replied in the case for instance where both were muffling Abbe proposed to say that if the anointed high priest gave an erroneous decision alone and acted AC accordingly alone is to be understood as referring to a high priest and a court who live in two different places and ruled respectively concerning two different prohibitions Rabbah however said to him is then diversity of domicile the determining factor surely not but even if they dwell in the same place so long as they rule concerning two different prohibitions he is regarded as having sinned alone it is obvious that if he transgressed in respect of the prohibition of suit and they in respect of idolatry he is regarded as having sinned alone because these prohibitions are distinct in origin and distinct in respect of sacrifices he bringing a bullock and they a bullock and a goat so that they bring in addition a goat and he does not bring one and much more so if he transgressed in respect of idolatry and they in respect of suit since these prohibitions are entirely distinct in respect of their sacrifices he having to bring a goat and they a bullock what however is the law where he transgressed in respect of the forbidden fat of the entrails and they in respect of the forbidden fat of the small bowels is it assumed that though they are alike in respect of sacrifices they are nevertheless being derived from two different biblical texts to be regarded as distinct in their origins or perhaps since the designation of fat is the same in both cases they are regarded as one if some reason could be found for the assumption that since the designation of fat is the same in both cases they are to be regarded as one what is the law it may be asked where he transgressed in respect of suit and they in respect of blood is it assumed that these are distinct prohibitions since they are distinct in their origins or Perhaps since they are alike in respect of sacrifices they are to be regarded as one the determining factor being the sacrifice this remains undecided the court is not liable unless they rule to an all part of a commandment and to retain a part of IT etc. Whence is it derived that they are not liable unless they rule to an all part of a commandment and to retain a part of IT as it has been said in the preceding chapter and a thing be it i.e. a thing but not an entire principle and so it is. With the anointed high priest whence is this deduced from the text wherein it is written so as to bring guilt upon the people which shows that the anointed high priest is like the congregation nor are they liable for idolatry etc. Whence is this derived from what our rabbis taught from the fact that idolatry was singled out it might have been assumed that only the uprooting of the entire principle involves the bringing of a sacrifice hence it was stated here from the eyes and elsewhere. It was stated from the eyes as elsewhere the court is meant so here also the court was meant and as further on only a think was hit but not an entire principle so here also a part only not an entire principle must have been an old mission of obligation upon the court to bring a sacrifice is incurred only where ignorance of the law was accompanied by error in action and so it is with the anointed high priest nor do they incur obligation in the case of idolatry unless ignorance of the law was accompanied by error in action tomorrow whence is this deduced from what our rabbis taught the error might have been assumed to imply obligation for error in action hence it was stated
Accompanied by ignorance of the law, both, however, agree that the sacrifice he brings is a goat, and both also agree that he does not bring it a sham till we consider, however, this point has the anointed high priest been specified in connection with the offense concerning which the punishment is correct if it was committed willfully and a sin offering if committed unwittingly, and yet it must be admitted that though he was mentioned in the one case, the same law applies to the other, so here also he was mentioned in the first case, and the same law applies to the second. What is Rabbi's reason? Scripture states, and the priest shall make atonement for the soul that earth when he sinneth through error, the soul refers to the anointed high priest, that earth refers to the ruler when he sinneth through error implies according to Rabbi this shall be deemed a sin even if due to error in action alone, but the rabbis are of the opinion that the reference is to him who sin depends on error in. Action the anointed high priest, however, being excluded since his sin does not depend solely on error in action but also on ignorance of the law, both, however, agree that the sacrifice he brings is a goat like that of any other individuals whence is this deduced from that which scripture stated, and if one person implying that there is no difference between the private individual ruler or an anointed high priest, all of them are included in the general expression of one person Talmud, Mas. Horeate and both also agree that he does not bring a sham to whence is this deduced from the scriptural text, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning the error which he committed. Rabbi is of the opinion that only he who sin depends entirely on error in action brings such a guilt offering a high priest, however, who sin does not invariably depend entirely on error in action alone, but also on ignorance of the law is excluded, is it then written entirely virtually? Yes, for otherwise it should have been written concerning his error. What need was there for which he committed its object consequently must be to teach us that there is no obligation unless all one sin is dependent on error in action and the rabbis only he who sin depends on error in action alone is liable and anointed high priest however is excluded since his sin does not depend on error in action alone either in idolatry or in the other commandments but on ignorance of the law together. With error in action mission of the court is under no obligation unless the rule concerning a prohibition the punishment for which is correct if it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering if transgressed unwittingly and so it is with the anointed high priest nor are they liable in respect of idolatry unless the rule concerning a matter the punishment for which is correct if it was committed willfully and a sin offering if committed unwittingly tomorrow whence is this deduced from it. Following Rabbi said here it is stated Allah and further on it is stated Allah as further on the prohibition involves the penalty of Karath if it was transgressed willfully and that of a sin offering if transgressed unwittingly so here also the ruling must be concerning a prohibition which involves the penalty of Karath if it was transgressed willfully and that of a sin offering if transgressed unwittingly proof has thus been found for the case of the congregation whence that of the anointed high priest so as to bring guilt upon the people shows that the anointed high priest is like the congregation as to a ruler the inference is made by a comparison of commandments with commandments in respect to a ruler it is written and do through error any one of all the commandments which the Lord and in respect of the congregation it is written and do any of the commandments as the obligation of the congregation relates to a prohibition involving Karath if it was transgressed Willfully and a sin offering if transgressed unwittingly so also the obligation of a ruler relates to a prohibition involving Karath if it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering if transgressed unwittingly as to an ordinary individual scripture states and if anyone and the latter is inferred from the former nor are they liable in respect of idolatry unless they ruled etc. Whence is this law deduced in regard to idolatry from what our rabbis taught from the fact that idolatry was single doubt it might have been assumed that in regard to it obligation is incurred even in respect of a prohibition which does not involve Karath when it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering when transgressed unwittingly hence it was stated here from the eyes and elsewhere it was stated from the eyes as their obligation is incurred only in respect of a prohibition involving Karath when it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering when transgressed unwittingly so here also. Obligation is incurred only in respect of a prohibition involving Karath when it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering when transgressed unwittingly proof has thus been found for the case of the congregation whence that of an ordinary individual ruler or an anointed high priest scripture stated and if one person which implies that there is no distinction between the private individual ruler or an anointed high priest all of them are included in the general expression of one person. And the latter may be deduced from the former this explanation is satisfactory in accordance with the view of him who employed the expression of Allah for an analogical purpose as stated above once however do the rabbis who employed Allah in connection with the laws of incest and rival wives deduce that obligation is incurred only where the prohibition involves Karath when it was transgressed willfully and a sin offering when transgressed unwittingly they deduce it from that which are Joshua. The Levi taught his son, Ye shall have one law for him that doth in error, but the soul that doth with a high hand, etc. All the commandments of the Torah were compared to the prohibition of idolatry, as in regard to idolatry, obligation is incurred only where the offense involves the punishment of Karath when it was committed willfully and a sin offering when committed unwittingly. So also here, obligation is incurred only where the offense involves Karath when committed willfully and a sin offering when committed unwittingly. Proof has thus been found for the case of a private individual ruler and an anointed high priest, both in regard to idolatry and the rest of the commandments. Whence, however, is it proved that the same applies to the congregation? The former is deduced from the letter as to Rabbi. What does he do with our Joshua? Levi's text he applies it to the following, since we find that Scripture made a distinction between a majority and individuals, a majority being. Punished by the sword and their money destroyed while individuals are punished by stoning and their money is spared, it might have been assumed that a distinction should also be made in respect of their sacrifices, hence it was expressly stated, Ye shall have one law, etc. Our Hilkiah of Hadronia demurred is the reason because scripture did not differentiate in this respect, but had it differentiated, it would have been suggested that a distinction should be made in respect of their sacrifices. What? However, could they bring should they bring a bullock? The congregation surely brings a bullock for the infringement of any of the other commandments. Should they bring a bullock for a burnt offering and a goat for a sin offering? The congregation surely brings such offerings in respect of idolatry. Should they bring a goat? A ruler surely brings such an offering in the case of his transgression of any of the other commandments. Should they bring a goat? This surely is also the sacrifice of an Individual it is required because it might have been suggested that whereas the congregation brings a bullock for a burnt offering and a goat for a sin offering these should reverse the procedure and bring a bullock for a sin offering and a goat for a burnt offering or the meaning maybe it might have been assumed to be necessary and that consequently there is no remedy for them hence it was taught that there was no such necessity all at any rate agree that if these verses were written for any purpose at all they were written for that of idolatry but what is the proof of others say our Joshua be Levi and again others say Cuddy replied scripture says and when ye shall hear and not observe all these commandments now which is a commandment that is as weighty as all other commandments surely it is that concerning idolatry the school of rabbi taught scripture says which the Lord hath spoken unto Moses and it is also written that the Lord hath commanded you by the hand of Moses now which is the commandment that was given in the words of the Holy One, blessed be he, and also by the hand of Moses, surely it is that of idolatry for our Ishmael recited the words I and thou shalt not have were heard from the mouth of omnipotence, the school of our Ishmael taught Talmud, Mas Horeth be from the day that the Lord gave commandments and onward throughout your generations, which is the commandment that was spoken at the very beginning, surely it is that of idolatry, but did not a master. State that Israel was given ten commandments at Merah, but the best proof is that given at first mission of the court are under no obligation to bring a sin offering for the transgression of a positive or a negative commandment relating to the sanctuary, nor does anyone bring an Ashamta for the transgression of a positive or a negative commandment relating to the sanctuary, they are liable, however, for the transgression of a positive or a negative commandment relating to the menstrual end. Any other individuals bring a sham to for the transgression of a positive or negative commandment relating to the menstruant, which is a positive commandment concerning the menstruant, the commandment separate thyself from the menstruant and the negative commandment do not come in unto the menstruant tomorrow whence is it deduced that elsewhere the congregation is not liable to bring a sacrifice and that an individual also is not liable to bring a sham to our Isaac B of Demi replied. Scripture said and he is guilty in connection
That returning and coming mean the same thing. Furthermore, let deduction be made from and he is guilty set in connection with uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things, for it is written and it being hidden from him that he is unclean and he is guilty. Our proper applied analogy is drawn only between the expressions and he is guilty and the commandments of the Lord on the one hand and the expressions and are guilty and the commandments of the Lord on the other set are. Shimei be ashy to our papa then let deduction be made from the analogy between and he is guilty and bearing of iniquity used in reference to the Ashamtali and he is guilty and bearing of iniquity that occur in connection with sliding scale sacrifices but said Arnaman be Isaac deduction is made from analogy between he is guilty and the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done used in reference to Ashamtali and they are guilty and the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done that occur in connection with the congregational sin offering no proof however may be adduced from the hearing of the voice swearing clearly with the lips and uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things concerning which it has not been said he is guilty and the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done mission of the court are under no obligation to bring an offering for an erroneous ruling relating to the hearing of the voice of adoration for Swearing clearly with the lips and for uncle Anas relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things and the ruler is similarly exempt. These are the words of our Jose the Galilean. Our Eagle said the ruler is liable in the case of all these except that of hearing of the voice of adoration because the king may neither judge nor be judged neither may he give evidence nor may evidence be tendered against him. Gamar said what is the reason of our Jose the Galilean scripture said and it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things whoever is subject to liability for every one of these is liable for any of them and whosoever is not subject to liability for every one of these is not liable for any of them might not this be suggested to imply that liability is incurred for one even where a person is not subject to liability for all but the following is the source from which our Jose the Galilean derives his reason it was taught our Jeremiah used to say it was stated in the Scriptures Talmud, Mas Horeth is mean suffice not and later it was stated again is mean suffice not to indicate that only he who is subject to the vicissitudes of poverty and wealth is subject to the laws mentioned a ruler and an anointed high priest however are excluded since they can never be reduced to poverty as to a ruler it is written and doth any one of all the things which the Lord his God hath commanded implying he above whom there is none but the Lord his God as to an anointed high priest it is written and the priest that is highest among his brethren meaning who is greatest among his brethren in beauty strength wisdom and wealth others say whence is it proved that if he has nothing of his own he must be made to be greater than his brethren for it was expressly stated and the priest that is highest among his brethren upon whose head the anointing oil is poured he must be made greater than his brethren Robin inquired of Arnam and B. Isaac what is the law? Of a ruler who was stricken with leprosy was his obligation completely set aside or was he only temporarily exempted he said to him does he bring of yours or of his own it was taught our Akiva said an anointed high priest is exempt from all these rabbis said what is our Akiva's reason scripture stated this is the offering of Aaron and his sons implying that only this one is obligatory upon him but no other such offering is obligatory upon him might it not be suggested that the all merciful has exempted him only from the poorest offering which is a tenth part of an ephah but not from those other offerings that are brought in case of poverty and wealth is cannot be imagined at all for it is written and the priest shall make atonement for him as touching his sin that he hath sinned in any of these things whoever may receive atonement by every one of these may also receive atonement by any of the others but whosoever may not obtain atonement by every one of these may not obtain Atonement by any of the others now however since it is written and it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things is the meaning there also that whosoever is liable for every one of these can also become liable for any of the others and whosoever is not liable for every one of these cannot become liable for the others why then have we learned that our Akiva said a ruler is liable for all except for hearing of the voice both Abbe and Rabba replied the expression in any is regarded by him as proof but that of in one is not regarded by him as proof but why is in any regarded as proof because the all merciful has written in at the end in connection with the law of the tenth part of an ephah thus indicating that whosoever is liable to bring the tenth part of an ephah can also come under the obligation to bring any of the others for could it have been imagined that a person may be liable for one of these offerings alone although he cannot become liable for any of the others in any of these things should have been written either in connection with the offering to the poor or with that for the rich mission for the unwitting transgression of any of all the commandments in the Torah the penalty for which if committed willfully is karath and if committed unwittingly a sin offering the individual brings as an offering a lamb or a goat the ruler brings a goat and the anointed high priest and the court bring a bullock in the case of idolatry the individual and the ruler and the anointed high priest bring a goat while the court bring a bullock and a goat the bullock for a burnt offering and the goat for a sin offering the individual and the ruler are both subject to the obligation of an ashamtalibi but the anointed high priest and the court are exempt the individual and the ruler and the anointed high priest are subject to the obligation of an ashamwadi but the court is exempt for unwitting transgression in respect of the hearing of the voice of Adoration for swearing clearly with the lips and for uncle and relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things the court is exempt and the individual the ruler and the anointed high priest are liable with this exception that the anointed high priest is not liable for a transgression relating to the uncle of the sanctuary and its consecrated things these are the words of our Simeon what do they bring a sliding scale sacrifice our Eliezer said the ruler brings a goat to it was taught our Simeon laid down the following rule wherever the individual is liable to an asham to leave the ruler is subject to the same obligation while an anointed high priest and the court are exempt and wherever the individual is liable to an asham what I ruler and an anointed high priest are subject to the same obligation while the court is exempt in respect of hearing of the voice swearing clearly with the lips and the uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things the court is exempt while a ruler and an anointed high priest are liable except that the ruler is not liable in respect of heeding of the voice nor the anointed high priest in respect of uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things wherever an individual is liable to a sliding scale sacrifice the ruler is subject to the same obligation while the anointed high priest and the court are exempt is not this teaching self-contradictory first it is stated that an anointed high priest is not liable in respect of uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things from which it follows that he is exempt only in respect of uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things but that in respect of hearing of the voice and swearing clearly with the lips he is liable now read the final clause wherever an individual is liable to a sliding scale sacrifice the ruler is subject to the same obligation while an anointed high priest and the court are exempt since the exemptions of the high priest and that of the court were mentioned together. It follows that as the court is exempt from all these, so is the anointed high priest exempt from all these. Talmud, Mas Horeth be Talmud, Mas Horeth be are not. Then these two statements contradictory are Hunasan of Arjashu replied. There is really no contradiction. One statement referring to the poor and the other to the poorest. And Arsimian is of the same opinion as Arakiba in respect of the one and disagrees with him in respect of the other. He is of the same opinion as Arakiba that in respect of the poorest offering the high priest is exempt and disagrees with hills in respect of the poor with this exception that the anointed high priest is not liable, etc. Hezekiah said what is Arsimian's reason because it is written that soul shall be cut off from the midst of the assembly, which implies that only he whose offering is like that of the assembly is liable. He, however, since his offering is not like that of the assembly is excluded if so it may be asked the offering of a ruler also is not like that of the assembly it is like that of the assembly in the atonement of the day of atonement if so it may again be asked the priests also are not like the assembly in the atonement of the day of atonement priests are like the assembly in respect of the other commandments throughout the year but the anointed high priest also is like the assembly in respect of the other commandments of it year but said rabbi say thus he who sin is like that of individuals and who are they the assembly our Eliezer said the ruler brings a goat etc said are Yohanan our Eliezer referred only to the uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things because the punishment of Karath was mentioned concerning it as in the case of the fixed sin offering our papa said logical argument leads to the same conclusion for if it
a tanner recited before Arshis Hayden Hashem Talibi is offered for the unwitting transgression of the law of uncleanness relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things. He said to him who could have told you this obviously our Eliezer who said because Kareth was mentioned in connection with it as in the case of a fixed sin offering a goat must be offered by the ruler for it. But Ar Yohanan surely said that our Eliezer admitted that he does not bring in Hashem Talibi. This is a difficulty chapter. Three Mishnah if an anointed high priest committed a sin and subsequently relinquished his high priesthood and similarly if a ruler committed a sin and subsequently lost his rank the anointed high priest brings a bullock and the ruler brings a goat if the anointed high priest relinquished his high priesthood and committed a sin afterwards and similarly if a ruler lost his rank and committed a sin afterwards the anointed high priest still brings a bullock while the ruler brings the same sin. Offering as a layman Gemara now that it had to be stated that if a high priest relinquished his high priesthood Talmud, Mas Horeyfei and committed a sin afterwards he still must bring a bullock was it also necessary to state that he brings a bullock where he sinned first and relinquished his high priesthood afterwards since it was stated in respect of a ruler that if he lost his rank and committed a sin afterwards he brings the same sin offering as a layman it stated in respect of an Anointed high priest that if he committed a sin and afterwards relinquished his high priesthood he brings a bullock whence are these laws derived from that which our rabbis taught and let him offer for his sin teaches that he brings his sin offering even if he sinned after he relinquished office for it might have been argued if a ruler who brings a sin offering in case of error in action alone does not bring his sin offering after he lost his rank how much less an anointed high priest who does not bring his sin offering in case of error in action alone but only where error in action was accompanied by ignorance of the law and scripture expressly stated then let him offer for his sin which teaches that he brings the same offering for his sin even if he sinned after he relinquished his office and in case it be argued let then the law that a ruler also brings the same sin offering be deduced by an inference from major to minor if an anointed high priest who does not Bring a sin offering for error in action alone brings nevertheless the same sin offering even if he sinned after relinquishing office how much more should a ruler who brings a sin offering for error in action alone bring the same sin offering even if he sinned after losing his rank scripture expressly stated when a ruler sinneth only when he is a ruler but not when he is a layman mishnah if they committed a sin before they were appointed and were subsequently appointed they are regarded as layman Arsimian said if their sin came to their knowledge before they were appointed they are liable but if after they were appointed they are exempt who is meant by ruler aching for it is stated in the scriptures any of all the things which the Lord his God hath commanded he above whom there is none but the Lord his God tomorrow whence are these laws derived from that which our rabbis taught if the anointed priest shall sin exclude sins committed previously could not this law however be Arrived at by logical reasoning if a ruler who brings a sin offering for error in action alone does not bring one for sins committed previously how much less should a high priest who brings a sin offering only where error in action was accompanied by ignorance of the law bring one for sins committed previously but no if this is said to apply to a ruler who indeed does not bring his sin offering after he lost his rank could it be said to apply also to an anointed high priest who does bring his sin offering even after he relinquished office since he brings his sin offering even after relinquishing office it might have been assumed that he brings also for sins committed previously and scripture stated the anointed priest shall sin which teaches that if he sinned while he was already anointed high priest he brings the prescribed sin offering if however when he was still one of the common people he does not bring it a similar discussion also took place in respect of a ruler when in Ruler sineth excludes sins he committed previously could not this law however be arrived at by logical reasoning if an anointed high priest who brings his sin offering even if he sinned after he relinquished office does not nevertheless bring one for sins he committed previously how much less should a ruler who does not bring his sin offering if he sinned after he lost his rank bring one for sins he committed previously the anointed high priest it may however be retorted may well be exempt from bringing because he is also exempt where his sin consisted of error in action alone could it be said however that the same law should apply to a ruler who does bring one where his sin consisted of error in action alone now since he brings for error in action alone it might be assumed that he brings also for sins he committed previously and scripture stated when a ruler sineth only if he sinned when he was already ruler but not if he sinned while he was still a layman Rabbis taught when a ruler sineth might have been taken to imply a decree and scripture stated if the anointed priest shall sin as there the meaning is if and when he sineth so here also the meaning is if and when he sineth the master said it might have been taken to imply a decree but could one possibly imagine such a thing yes it may be answered for we find that it is written in the scripture and I shall put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession which is an announcement to them that they will be visited by plagues these are the words of our Judah our Simeon said this text excludes plagues due to supernatural causes now as our Judah declared that the scriptural text is an announcement so here also it might have been assumed that the text implies a decree hence it had to be written according to our Simeon however do not plagues that are due to supernatural causes impart levitical uncleanness surely it was taught when a man shall have implies from it. Time of the promulgation onwards may not this however be arrived at by logical deduction uncleanness is mentioned in connection with one who has an issue and uncleanness is mentioned in respect of plagues as in the case of a man who has an issue the laws of uncleanness are applicable only from the time of their promulgation onwards so in the case of plagues their laws of uncleanness are applicable only from the time of their promulgation onwards no if this restriction is applicable to a man who has an issue because he does not become unclean where it was due to accident could it also be said to apply to plagues which do impart uncleanness even where they were due to supernatural causes hence scripture stated when a man shall have which implies from the time of the promulgation onwards robber replied the exclusion refers to plagues that are due to ghosts or popper replied the exclusion refers to plagues that are due to witchcraft our rabbis taught when in ruler sineth excludes a Sick man should he because he is sick be removed from his rank or of Dimi Behammer replied the exclusion refers to a ruler who became lepers as it is said and the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in the house of freedom and Jotham the king's son wins over the household since it is stated in the house of freedom it must be inferred that until then he was a servant as is illustrated in the case of Argamaliel and Arjashua they once traveled on board a ship Argamaliel had with him some bread only while Arjashua had with him bread and flour when Argamaliel's bread was consumed he depended on Arjashua's flour did you know the former asked him that we should be so much delayed that you brought flour with you the latter answered him a certain star rises once in seventy years and leads the sailors astray and I suspected it might rise and lead us astray you possess so much knowledge the former said to him and yet must travel on board a ship it other replied rather than be surprised at me marvel at two disciples you have on land are Eliezer Hizma and are Yohanan Bigajada who are able to calculate how many drops there are in the sea and yet have neither bread to eat nor raiment to put on he decided to appoint them as supervisors and when he landed he sent for them but they did not come he sent for them a second time and when they came he said to them do you imagine that I offer you rulership Talmud, Mas Horeyf B it is servitude that I offer you as it is said and they spoke to him saying if thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day our rabbis taught when a ruler sineth are Yohanan Bizakai said happy is the generation whose ruler brings a sacrifice for a sin he has committed unwillingly if its ruler brings a sacrifice is there any need to say what one of the common people would do and if he brings a sacrifice for a sin he has committed unwillingly is there any need to say what he would do in case of a sin committed Willfully rob a son of Rabbi Dimmer now then it is written and he shall make restitution for that which he hath done amiss in the holy thing and concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat it is written which he hath sinned and wherewith he hath made Israel to sin could the meaning there also be happy is that generation here the case is different because scripture deliberately changed the expression Arnam and Behistah made the following exposition what is meant by the scriptural text there is a vanity which is done upon the earth that there are righteous men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked again there are wicked men to whom it happeneth etc happy are the righteous men unto whom it happeneth in this world according to the work of the wicked in the world to come woe to the wicked men to whom it happeneth in this world according to the work of the righteous in the world to come said Rabba with the righteous then if
who ate with the intention of performing the commandment applies the just do walk in them while to him who ate merely to enjoy a substantial meal applies but transgressors do stumble therein said Rashlakish to him do you call him wicked granted he has not performed the commandment to perfection has he not however eaten of the paschal lamb but it may be applied to two men one of whom had his wife and his sister with him at home and the other also had his wife and sister with him at home one happened to come in contact with his wife while the other happened to come in contact with his sister to him who happened to come in contact with his wife applies the just do walk in them while to him who happened to come in contact with his sister applies but transgressors do stumble therein what a comparison we spoke of one way but here is it not a case of two ways but it may be applied to Lot and his two daughters to them whose intention was the performance of a commandment applies the just do walk in them but to him since his intention was to commit a sin applies but transgressors do stumble therein is it not possible that he also intended to perform a commandment are you had and replied this entire verse shows that his intention was transgression and Lot lifted up his analogous to his master's wife lifted up her eyes his eyes is analogous to Samson said get her for me for she is pleasing in my eyes and beheld is analogous to Shechem the son of Hammer beheld her all the Plain of the Jordan is analogous to for on account of a harlot and man is brought to a loaf of bread that it was well watered is analogous to I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water my will and my flax my oil and my drink but was he not a victim of circumstances it was taught in the name of our Jose son of our Honey why is there a point on the Bob of Ubiquima mentioned in connection with the elder daughter to indicate that though he did not know when she lay down he well knew when she arose what however could he do surely what was done could not be undone matters might have been different he should not have drunk again on the following evening Rabbi made the following exposition what is meant by the biblical text a brother transgressed against a strong city and their contentions are like the bars of a castle a brother transgressed against a strong city refers to Lot who separated himself from Abraham and their contentions are like the bars of the castle because he caused contentions between Israel and Ammon as it is said an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the assembly of the Lord Rabbi others say our Isaac made the following exposition what is the meaning of the biblical text he that separateth himself seeketh his own desire and snarleth against all sound wisdom he that separateth himself seeketh his own desire refers to Lot who separated himself from Abraham and snarleth against all sound wisdom for his shame was exposed in the synagogues and in the houses of study as we learned an Ammonite and a Moabite are forbidden to enter into the assembly for Everola said Tamar committed adultery and Zimri also committed adultery Tamar committed adultery and kings and prophets descended from her Zimri committed adultery and through him many ten thousands of Israel fell Arnam and B Isaac said a transgression with good intent is more meritorious than the performance of a commandment with no intent for it is said blessed above Women jail be the wife of Eber the Canite above women in the tent shall she be blessed who are the women in the tent Sarah Rebecca Rachel and Leah but this is not so for did not Rab Judah say in the name of Rab let a man always engage in Torah and the performance of commandments even though his motive may be ulterior because even ulterior motive will ultimately lead to disinterested study and performance say like the meaningless performance of a commandment are you had and said that profligate had seven sexual connections at that hour for it is said between her feet he sunk he fell he lay etc but surely she enjoyed the transgression are you had and said in the name of our Simeon Bioha even the favors of the wicked are distasteful to the righteous reverting to the above text Rab Judah said in the name of Rab let a man always engage in Torah and the performance of commandments even though his motive be ulterior because ulterior motive will ultimately lead to disinterested study and Performance for as a reward for the forty-two sacrifices which the wicked Balak offered, he gained the privilege of having Ruth descended from him. For our Jose, son of our Hannah, said Ruth was the daughter of the son of Eglon, who was the son of the son of Balak, the king of Moab. Our high B Abba said in the name of our Yohanan, whence is it deduced that the Holy One blessed be he does not deprive one even of the reward for an elegant expression from here. Whereas in the case of the elder daughter who called her son Moab, the All Merciful said to Moses, Be not at enmity with Moab, neither contend with them in battle. Battle Talmud, Mas Horeth only must not be contended with them, but knowing them was well permitted. In the case, however, of the younger daughter who called her son Ben Ami, he told him, Harass them not, nor contend with them at all, even knowing them was not permitted. Our high B Abba said in the name of our Joshua B Korha, one should always perform a good deed as early as possible. For as a reward for the one night by which she anticipated the younger the elder gained the privilege of royal status in Israel four generations earlier our rabbis taught of the common people excludes an anointed high priest of the common people excludes a ruler have not these been once excluded the anointed high priest having been subjected to the offering of a bullock and the ruler to that of a he goat since it might have been assumed that an anointed high priest brings a bullock only where ignorance of the law was accompanied by error in action but where there was error in action alone he brings a lamb or a she goat hence it was expressly stated of the common people to exclude an anointed high priest of the common people to exclude a ruler this reply satisfactorily explains the case of the anointed high priest but as regards that of the ruler he surely does bring his particular offering even where there was only error in action Arzibid replied in the name of Rabbi is a case where he ate for instance suet of the size of an olive while he was still a commoner then he was appointed to rulership and then his transgression came to his knowledge it might have been assumed that he must bring a lamb or a she goat hence it was stated that the law was not so this explanation is quite satisfactory according to our Simeon who was guided by the time the sin was brought to his knowledge what however can be said according to the rabbis who are guided by the time it sin was committed but said Arzibit in the name of Rabbi here it is a case where he ate for instance suet of the size of half an olive while he was a commoner and then he was appointed to rulership and finished it and after that his transgression came to his knowledge since it might have been assumed that these are combined and he must bring an offering of a lamb or a she goat hence it was stated that the law was not so Rabbi inquired of Arnam and does rulership constitute a break how is this too? He understood where a man for instance ate suet of the size of half an olive while he was commoner then he was appointed to rulership and when he relinquished office he finished it are the two halves in the previous case not combined merely because he ate the one half when he was a commoner and the other when he was ruler but in this case since he ate both halves when he was a commoner the two are combined or is there perhaps no difference this may be solved from the following for Ola said in the name of our Yohanan if a man having eaten suet had set aside a sacrifice and then changed his faith and subsequently retracted his offering since it had been suspended must remain so forever how now an apostate is not a person qualified to bring a sacrifice but this ruler is surely one who is well qualified to bring a sacrifice Arzara inquired of Arshis hate what is the law if while a commoner the ruler ate something concerning which there is doubt as to whether it was not suet and Having been appointed to rulership, the doubt came to his knowledge according to the rabbis who are guided by the time the sin was committed. There can be no question that he must bring an Asham to leave. The question, however, arises according to our Simeon does the change affect a case of doubt as it does one of certainty, or does it perhaps affect a case of certainty only because the ruler has to bring a different sacrifice? But here, since his sacrifice does not change, it might be said that he must bring an Asham to leave. This remains undecided. Our rabbis taught of the common people excludes an apostate. Our Simeon B. Jose said in the name of our Simeon, and doth through error any of all the things which the Lord his God hath commanded not to be done, and his guilty implies that only he who repents when he becomes conscious of his sin brings a sacrifice for his error, but he who does not repent on becoming conscious of his sin does not bring a sacrifice for his error. What practical difference? Is there between them or Hamdan reply the difference between them lies in the case of one who being an apostate in respect of the eating of suet brings a sacrifice for eating blood the masters hold that since he is an apostate in respect of the eating of suet he is also regarded as an apostate in respect of the eating of the blood while the master holds that in respect of blood at least he repents when he becomes conscious of his sin but surely Rabbi stated that all agreed that an apostate in respect of the eating of suet is not regarded as an apostate in respect of the blood but here they differ in regard to one who eats carrion to satisfy his appetite and suet was mistaken by him for permitted fat and he ate it the masters are of the opinion that as he would have eaten it to satisfy his appetite even willfully he is
Between them the difference between them is the case of a mingled texture forbidden only rabbinically the masters hold the opinion that only when something is biblically forbidden is he who disregards it to be deemed an apostate but if it is only rabbinically forbidden one is not to be deemed an apostate while the master is of the opinion that in respect of a mingled texture since its prohibition is well known one is deemed an apostate if he disregards it even though the prohibition is only rabbinical concerning this law there is a dispute between Araha and Ravana one maintains that he who eats forbidden food in order to satisfy his appetite is deemed an apostate but if in defiance of the law he is deemed to be a Sadducee and the other maintains that even in defiance of the law he is deemed an apostate but who is a Sadducee he who worships idols and objection was raised if he ate one flea or one gnat he is considered an apostate in this case surely he acted in defiance of the law and yet he is called an apostate there it is a case where he said I would like to feel the taste of forbidden food who is meant by ruler a king etc our rabbis taught a ruler might signify the ruler of a tribe like Nashon the son of Ammonadab hence it was stated of all the things which the Lord his God hath commanded and further on it stated that he may learn to fear the Lord his God Talmud Mas Horeth B.S. further on the references to him who has none above him save the Lord his God so in the case of the ruler the references to him above whom there is none save the Lord his God Rabbi inquired of Arhai is one like myself to bring a goat you have your rival in Babylon the other replied the kings of Israel and the kings of the house of David the first objected bring sacrifices independently of one another there the other replied they were not subordinate to one another here however we are subordinate to them our Safford taught us Rabbi inquired of Arhai is one like Myself to bring a he goat there the other replied is the scepter here only the lawgiver as it was taught the scepter shall not depart from Judah refers to the exilarch in Babylon who rules Israel with the scepter nor the ruler's staff from between his feet refers to the grandchildren of Hillel who teach the Torah to Israel in public mission and who is the anointed high priest he who was anointed with the anointing oil and not he who merely ministers in more garments the only difference between the high priest who is anointed with the anointing oil and the one who merely ministers in more garments is the bullet that is offered for the unwitting transgression of any of the commandments and the only difference between the acting and the retired high priest is the bullet on the day of atonement and the tenth part of the ephah they are both equal in the temple service of the day of atonement and both are commanded to marry a virgin and are forbidden to marry a widow both may not defile themselves for the dead bodies of their relatives, neither may they let their hair grow wild, nor may they rend their clothes, and both enable the manslayer to return tomorrow. Our rabbis taught the anointing oil which Moses prepared in the wilderness was used for the boiling of the roots. These are the words of our Judah. Our Jose said, Surely it did not suffice even for the dabbing of the roots, but the roots were soaked in water, and over its surface the oil was poured, which thus absorbed it. Sent and retained it, said our Judah to him, did then only one miracle happen with the anointing oil. Surely it was originally only twelve logs, and with it was anointed the tabernacle and its furniture, Aaron and his sons throughout the seven days of consecration, and all of it still remained intact for the time to come, as it is said, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generation. Another buried the taught, and Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle, and all that. Was there in Arjuna said with the anointing oil which Moses prepared in the wilderness there occurred many miracles from the beginning to the end originally it only measured twelve logs now consider how much the pot absorbed how much the roots absorbed and how much the fire burned and yet it sufficed for the anointing of the tabernacle and its furniture and Aaron and his sons throughout the seven days of consecration and high priests and kings also were anointed with it and even a high priest who was the son of a high priest must be anointed but a king who was the son of a king need not be anointed and if it be asked why was Solomon anointed it was due it may be replied to the dispute of Adonijah and so was Joash anointed on account of the claims of Athaliah and Jehoahaz on account of Jehoiakim who was older than he by two years and that oil remains for the time to come as it is said this shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations the numerical value of say. His twelve logs the master said and even a high priest who is the son of a high priest must be anointed whence is this deduced from the scriptures wherein it is written and the anointed priest that shall be in his stead from among his sons scripture should have stated and the priest that shall be in his stead from among his sons why then the anointed consequently it must have been intended to imply that even the son of a high priest succeeds to his father's office only if he was anointed. Otherwise he does not the master said but a king who is the son of a king need not be anointed whence is this deduced Arahavi Jacob replied from scripture wherein it is written to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children etc which implies that the kingship is an inheritance whence is it deduced that in cases of dispute anointing is required and that the king is not entitled to transmit the kingship as he desires our papa replied scripture stated he and his Children in the midst of Israel only when there is peace in Israel may the text he and his children be applied to him even though no anointing had taken place a Tanitachi who the son of Nimshi also was anointed only on account of the dispute of Joram this surely could have been deduced from the fact that he was the first of a dynasty there is a lacuna in the text and the following should be inserted the kings of the house of David were anointed the kings of Israel were not anointed whence is this deduced Robert replied scripture stated arise anoint him for this is he etc only he requires anointing but no other who is not of the Davidic dynasty requires anointing the master said Jehu the son of Nimshi also was anointed only on account of the dispute of Joram is it permissible to make inappropriate use of the sacred oil on account of the dispute of Joram the son of Ahab as our papa said elsewhere that the anointing was performed with pure balsam so here also it was performed with Pure balsam and Jehoahaz on account of Jehoiakim who was older than he by two years but was he older than he surely it is written and the sons of Josiah the firstborn Yohanan the second Jehoiakim the third Zedekiah the fourth Shalom and our Yohanan said that Shalom is identical with Zedekiah and Yohanan with Jehoahaz Jehoiakim was in fact older but the meaning of firstborn is first in succession to the kingship do however younger sons succeed to kingship before the older one surely it is written but the kingdom gave he to Jehoram because he was the firstborn Jehoram was worthily filling the place of his ancestors Jehoiakim was not worthily filling the place of his ancestors the master said Shalom is identical with Zedekiah and Yohanan with Jehoahaz were they not however enumerated individually for it is written the third the fourth third means third of the sons and fourth means fourth in succession to the kingdom since Jehoahaz reigned first and Jehoiakim then Jeconiah and Finally Zedekiah our rabbis taught Shalom is identical with Zedekiah then why was he called Shalom because he was perfect in his deeds others say Shalom implies that the kingdom of David came to end in his days and what was his real name Mahania as it is stated and the king of Babylon made Mahania his father's brother king in his stead and changed his name to Zedekiah he said to him may God justify my judgment against you should you rebel against me as it is said and he brought him under an oath and it is also written and he also rebelled against king Nebuchadnezzar who had made him swear by God Talmud Mas Horeth the Talmud Mas Horeth was however the anointing oil in existence in the days of Jehoah surely it was taught at the time when the holy ark was hidden away there were also hidden the anointing oil the jar of man Aaron's rod with its almonds and blossoms and the coffer which the Philistines had sent to Israel as a gift and concerning which it is said and put the jewels of gold which he returned him for a guilt offering in a coffer by the side thereof and sent it away that it may go and who hid them it was Josiah king of Judah who hid them because having observed that it was written in the Torah the Lord will bring thee and thy king unto a nation that thou hast not known he gave orders that they shall be hidden away as it is said and he said unto the Levites that taught all Israel that were holy unto the Lord put the holy ark into the house which Solomon the son of David king of Israel did build there shall no more be a burden upon your shoulders now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel and our Eliezer stated the inference is arrived at by an analogy between the expressions there and there to he kept and to he kept and generations and generations our papa replied Jehoahaz was anointed with pure balsam our rabbis taught how were the kings anointed in the shape of a wreath and the priests in the shape of a what is Meant by the shape of a chi, Armanisha began replied in the shape of a Greek. One tanner reported that oil was poured upon his head first, and afterwards some oil was applied between his eyelids. But another tanner reported that first some
holy objects is not applicable to the dew of Hermon, so also is it not applicable to the anointing oil on the beard of Aaron. Aaron, however, was still anxious. He said, It is possible that Moses did not trespass, but I may have trespassed. A heavenly voice came forth and said to him, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, as Moses is not guilty of trespass. So are you not guilty of trespass? Our rabbis taught the kings are anointed only at a fountain that there. Sovereignty may endure as it is said, and the king said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord and bring him down to Gin. I said, He who wishes to ascertain whether he will live through the year or not shall during the ten days between the new year and the day of atonement kindle a lamp in a house wherein there is no draft. If the light continues to burn, he may know that he will live through the year. He who desires to engage in business and wishes to ascertain whether he will succeed or not, let him rear up the cock if it grows plump and fine. He will succeed. He who desires to set out on a journey and wishes to ascertain whether he will return home again or not, let him station himself in a dark house. If he sees the reflection of his shadow, he may know that he will return home again. This, however, is not a proper thing to do, lest his courage fail him and he meet with misfortune in consequence. Said Abbe, now that it has been said that omens are of significance, a man should. Make a regular habit of eating at the beginning of the year pumpkin fenugreek leek beet and dates are measure she has said to his sons whenever you intend coming in for your lesson with your master revise the subject first and then enter the presence of your master and when you sit before him look at his mouth for it is written but thine eyes shall see thy teacher when you practice your lessons practice them by a river of water so that as the waters advance continually so may your acquired knowledge advance continually rather sit on the rubbish heap of Matha Mahaja than in the palaces of Pumadai the rather eat an unsavory gilding of Matha Mahaja than the Kutha of the lofty mansions my horn is exalted in the Lord my horn is exalted but not my flask the kingdoms of David and Solomon who were anointed with a horn endured the kingdoms of Saul and Jehu who were anointed with the flask did not endure he who was anointed with the anointing oil etc our rabbis taught anointed might imply a king. Hence it was stated priest if only priest had been stated one might have applied it to the high priest who was dedicated by the additional garments only hence it was stated anointed if only anointed had been written one might have applied it to the priest anointed for war hence it was stated and the anointed priest above whom there is no other anointed priest how is this inferred as Rabbah said that the thigh implies the right thigh so here also the anointed implies the most important of it. Anointed the master said anointed might imply a king does a king bring a sin offering of a bullock surely it is a he goat that he brings it was necessary since it might have been assumed that only for error in action does a king bring a sin offering of a he goat but that for ignorance of the law he brings a bullock hence it was necessary to teach us that he never brings a bullock the only difference between a high priest who is anointed with the anointing oil etc our mission cannot be. Reconciled with the view of our mayor, for should it be assumed to agree with the view of our mayor, it may be pointed out that it was taught a high priest who is dedicated by the additional garments brings a bullock, which is the prescribed sin offering for the transgression of all the commandments. These are the words of our mayor, but the sages did not agree with him. What is our mayor's reason? Because it was taught anointed only implies a high priest who was anointed with the anointing oil, whence, however, is it deduced that one dedicated by the additional garments only is also subject to that law, for it was expressly stated if the priest be anointed to whom then is our mission to be attributed to the rabbi's Talmud, Mas Horeb be read. However, the final clause, the only difference between the acting and the retired high priest is the bullock on the day of atonement and the tenth part of the ephah. This surely must represent the view of our mayor, for it was taught if some disqualification occurred in. The high priest who consequently retired and another priest was anointed in his stead when the first returns to his ministry the other retains all the obligations relating to the priesthood these are the words of our mayor our Jose said the first returns while the second is rendered unfit either as a high priest or as an ordinary priest said our Jose once it happened with Joseph the son of Elam of Sephoris that a disqualification in the high priest having occurred he was appointed in his stead and when the incident was submitted to the sages they ruled that the first returns to his ministry while the second is rendered unfit either as a high priest or as an ordinary priest he is unfit as a high priest owing to enmity and he is unfit as an ordinary priest because in the sphere of holiness you may ascend not descend does the first clause then represent the view of the rabbis and the final clause that of our mayor our historian replied yes the first clause represents the view of the rabbis and the final clause that of Armeir our Joseph replied the author of our mission is Rabbi who based it upon the opinions of two Tanaim Rabbi replied the views represented are those of our Simeon who agrees with Armeir in one respect and differs from him in the other as it was taught the things which distinguish a high priest from an ordinary priest are the following the bullet that is offered for the unwitting transgression of any of all the commandments and the bullet of the day of atonement and the tenth part of the Eva he must neither let his hair grow wild nor may he rent his garments but he tears them from below while the ordinary priest tears them from above he must not defile himself by coming in contact with the dead bodies even of his relatives he is commanded to marry a virgin and is forbidden to marry a widow he enables a manslayer to return to his home he may offer sacrifices even while alone and though he must not then eat of the sacrificial meat or take a share of it. He offers up his portion first and receives his portion first. He ministers in eight garments and the entire service of the Day of Atonement may be performed by him alone and he is also exempt from bringing a sacrifice for an unwitting transgression of defilement relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things and all these laws are applicable to the high priest who is dedicated by the additional garments alone with the exception of the bullet that is offered for the unwitting. Transgression of any of all the commandments all these laws furthermore are also applicable to an anointed high priest who having acted as substitute has retired from office with the exception of the bullet of the Day of Atonement and the tenth part of the ephah all these laws are inapplicable to a priest anointed for war with the exception of the five things that are specified in the biblical section under discussion he must not let his hair grow wild nor may he rent his garments he must not defile himself for the dead bodies of his relatives he is commanded to marry a virgin and forbidden to marry a widow and enables the manslayer to return to his home so our Judah but the sages said he does not enable the manslayer to return and whence is it proved that this very represents the view of our Simeon our Papa replied who was it that was heard to say that the high priest is exempted in regard to an unwitting transgression of defilement relating to the sanctuary and its consecrated things surely it was our Simeon with the exception of the five things that are specified in the biblical section under discussion whence is this inference from that which our rabbis taught and the priest that is highest among his brethren refers to the high priest upon whose head the anointing oil is poured refers to the priest who is anointed for war and that is consecrated to put on the garments refers to the high priest who is dedicated by the additional garments alone concerning all of them it is stated he shall not let the hair of his head grow wild nor rent his clothes neither shall he go into any dead body as one might assume that all of them may offer sacrifices while owens it was specifically stated for the consecration of the anointing oil of his god is upon him upon him but not upon his associate now that scripture has excluded him it might have been assumed that he is not commanded to marry a virgin hence it was stated and he shall take a wife in her virginity on this point tanaim are in dispute and he shall take a wife in her virginity after scripture has excluded him and included him again so our ishmael our Akiba said one could well have known this law in the case where he was temporarily removed on account of a mishap once however could it have been inferred in the case where he was permanently removed on account of disqualifying blemishes hence it was stated and he rob inquired of our nominee an anointed high priest who was Stricken with leprosy, Mary widow, is he only suspended or is he exempt from all the duties of the high priesthood? He was unable to give an answer once our papa was sitting at his studies and raised the same inquiry, said who not the son of our nomin to our papa we have learned such a law one could well have known this law in the case where he was temporarily removed on account of a mishap once however could it be inferred in the case where he was permanently removed on account of disqualifying blemishes hence it was stated and he thereupon arose kissed him on his head and gave him his daughter mission a high priest rents his garments from below and an ordinary priest from above a high priest may offer sacrifices while well, and on though he may not eat of the sacrificial meat but an ordinary priest may in such circumstances neither offer sacrifices nor eat of sacrificial
his head grow wild nor rent his clothes showing that the requirements of letting one's hair grow wild or renting one's garments are not at all applicable to him so Arjuna R. Ishmael said he does not rent his clothes in the manner of other people but he rents from below while an ordinary priest rents from above Samuel holds the same opinion as Arjuna in one respect and disagrees with him in another mission whatever is more frequent than another takes precedence over that other and whatsoever is more sacred than another takes precedence over that other if the bullock of the anointed high priest and the bullock of the congregation are simultaneously presented the bullock of the anointed high priest must precede that of the congregation in all its details tomorrow whence are these laws deduced of a reply from scripture which stated besides the burnt offering of the morning which is for a continual burnt offering now consider since it was written the burnt offering of the morning what need was there for writing again continual burnt offering consequently it was this that the all merciful intended whatsoever is more frequent takes precedence and whatsoever is more sacred than another takes precedence over that other once is this deduced from what was taught at the school of our Ishmael thou shalt sanctify him the priest therefore in respect of any matter of sanctity he must be the first in the reading of the law the first in the recital of any benediction and it first in receiving a handsome portion Talmud, Mas Horeate of the bullock of the anointed high priest and the bullock of the congregation etc. Whence is this deduced from what our rabbis taught and he shall burn it and he burned the first bullock what need was there to state the first in order to indicate that it must precede the bullock of the congregation in all its details our rabbis taught if the bullock of the anointed high priest and the bullock of the congregation are simultaneously Presented the bullock of the anointed high priest must precede the bullock of the congregation in all its details for as much as the anointed high priest affects the atonement and the congregation receives the atonement it is reasonable that he who affects atonement shall take precedence over him who receives the atonement and so it is also stated in scripture and have made atonement I for himself and two for his household and three for all the assembly of Israel the bullock that is offered. For a sin committed by the congregation through ignorance of the law is to precede the bullock for the sin of idolatry what is the reason the one is a sin offering and the other is a burnt offering and it was taught what need was there for scripture to state and he shall offer that which is for the sin offering first if merely in order to teach that the sin offering was to be the first surely it has already been stated and he shall prepare the second for a burnt offering according to the Ordinance consequently it must be concluded that in this text there has been laid down the general principle that all sin offerings are to precede the burnt offerings that are presented together with them and there is an accepted tradition that even a sin offering consisting of a bird is to precede a burnt offering consisting of a beast the bullock for idolatry is to precede the goat for idolatry while the one surely is a sin offering while the other is a burnt offering in the west it was explained in the name of Rabbi Bimari because an Aleph is wanting in the head for idolatry the written form being Elihad Rabbi replied because according to the ordinance was written concerning it the goat for idolatry is to precede the goat of a ruler what is the reason the one is for a congregation while the other is for an individual the he goat of a ruler is to precede the she goat of a private individual what is the reason the one is for a sovereign the other for a commoner the she Goat of an individual is to precede the ulam of an individual, but surely it was taught that the ulam of an individual must precede the she goat of an individual. Abbe replied, This is a matter of dispute between Tanaim. One master holds a view that a she goat is preferable since it has also the advantage of being the offering of an individual for the sin of idolatry, while the other master is of the opinion that a ulam is preferable since it has the advantage of having its fat tail. Also offered on the altar, the omer must precede the lamb that is brought together with it. The two loaves are to precede the lambs that are brought with them. This is the general rule. The offering which is due to the sanctity of the day is to precede the offering. The presentation of which is due to the bread. Mishnah, a man takes precedence over a woman in matters concerning the saving of life and the restoration of lost property, and a woman takes precedence over a man in respect of clothing and Ransom from captivity when both are exposed to immoral degradation in their captivity the man's ransom takes precedence over that of the woman Gemara our rabbis taught if a man and his father and his teacher were in captivity he takes precedence over his teacher and his teacher takes precedence over his father while his mother takes precedence over all of them a scholar takes precedence over a king of Israel for if a scholar dies there is none to replace him while if a king of Israel dies all Israel are eligible for kingship a king takes precedence over a high priest for it is said and the king said unto them take with you the servants of your lord etc a high priest takes precedence over a prophet for it is said and let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there's Zadok being mentioned before Nathan and furthermore it is stated here now of Joshua the high priest thou and thy fellows etc lest it be assumed that these were common people it was expressly stated for they are Men that are assigned and the expression sign cannot but refer to a prophet as it is stated and he give the sign or a wonder a high priest anointed with the anointing oil takes precedence over one who is only dedicated by the additional garments he who is dedicated by the additional garments takes precedence over an anointed high priest who has retired from office owing to a mishap an anointed high priest who has retired from office on account of a mishap takes precedence over one who has retired on account of his blemish he who has retired on account of his blemish takes precedence over him who was anointed for war purposes only he who was anointed for war takes precedence over the deputy high priest the deputy high priest takes precedence over the amarkle what is amarkle are historical he who commands all the amarkle takes precedence over the temple treasurer the temple treasurer takes precedence over the chief of the watch the chief of the guard takes precedence over the Chief of the men of the daily watch, the chief of the daily watch takes precedence over an ordinary priest. The question was raised in respect of Levitical uncleanness who takes precedence, the deputy high priest or the priest anointed for war. Marzich or the son of Arnaman replied, Come and hear what has been taught. If a deputy high priest or a priest anointed for war were going on their way and came upon the corpse of burial of which is obligatory upon them, it is better that the priest anointed for war shall defile himself rather than the deputy high priest. For if the high priest meet with some disqualification, the deputy high priest steps in to perform the temple service. Has it not been taught, however, that the priest anointed for war takes precedence over the deputy high priest? Rabbin replied that Barry deals with the question of saving life. Mishnah, a priest takes precedence over a Levite, a Levite over an Israelite, an Israelite over a bastard, a bastard over a Nathan, a Nathan over. A proselyte and a proselyte over an emancipated slave this order of precedence applies only when all these were in other respects equal if the bastard however was a scholar and the high priest and ignoramus the learned bastard takes precedence over the ignorant high priest Gemara a priest takes precedence over a Levite for it is stated the sons of Amram Aaron and Moses and Aaron when separated that he should be sanctified as most holy a Levite takes precedence over an Israelite for it is stated at that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi etc and Israelite takes precedence over a bastard for the one is of legitimate birth and the other is not a bastard takes precedence over a Nathan for the one comes from an eligible origin and the other from a non eligible origin a Nathan takes precedence over a proselyte for the one was brought up with us in holiness and the other was not brought up with us in holiness a proselyte takes precedence over an emancipated slave for the one was Included in the curse and the other was not included in the curse. This order of precedence applies only when all these were in other respects equal, etc. Once is this deduced, Araha, son of Arhan, and replied from scripture which states she is more precious than rubies, i.e., more precious than the high priest who enters into the innermost sanctuary. It was taught Arsimian Bio. He said it stands to reason that an emancipated slave should take precedence over a proselyte for the one was brought up with us in holiness and the other was not, but the former was included in the curse while the latter was not. Our Eliezer, son of Arzadok, was asked by his disciples why are all willing to marry a proselyte while not all are willing to marry an emancipated slave. He answered them the one was included in the curse while the other was not. Another explanation is that the one is known to protect her chastity while the other is not. Our Eliezer was asked by his disciples why does a dog know its owner while a cat? Does not he answer them if he who eats something of that from which a mouse has eaten loses his memory how much more so the animal which eats the mouse itself or Eliezer was asked by his disciples why do all persecute the mice because of their bad nature what is it robber replied they not even at close Talmud, Mas Horeth B or Papa replied they not
Said to but not three your mnemonic is the third finger ten things adversely affect one study passing under the bit of a camel and much more so under the camel itself passing between two camels passing between two women the passing of a woman between two men passing under the offensive odor of a carcass passing under a bridge under which water has not flowed for forty days eating bread that was insufficiently baked eating meat out of a soup ladle drinking from a streamlet that runs through a graveyard and looking into the face of a dead body others say he who reads an inscription upon a grave is also subject to the same disability our rabbis taught when the nasi enters all the people rise and do not resume their seats until he requests them to sit when the abet then enters one row rises on one side and another row on the other and they remain standing until he has sat down in his place when the hakam enters everyone whom he passes rises and sits down as soon as he Passed until the sage has sat down in his place sons of sages and scholars may if the public is in need of their services tread upon the heads of the people if one of them went out in his need to ease himself he may re-enter and sit down in his place sons of a scholar whose father holds the office of Parnas may if they possess the capability of understanding the discourses enter and sit down before their father with their backs to the people when however they do not possess the capability of understanding the discourses they enter and sit down before their father with their faces towards the public our Eliezer son of Arzadik said in a festive gathering also they are treated as attachments to their father the master said if he went out in his need to ease himself he may re-enter and sit down in his place our papa said this applies only to the minor functions of the body but not to the major functions since he should have examined himself before for Rab Judah said a man should Always make a habit of easing himself early in the morning and late in the evening in order that there be no need for him to go far now however that everybody is weaker the same rule applies even to the larger functions our Eliezer son of our Sadok said at a festive gathering also they are treated as attachments to their father Rabbah said only during the lifetime of their father and in the presence of their father our Yohanan said that instruction was issued in the days of our Simeon Begamaliel too. When our Simeon Begamaliel was the president our Meir the Hakam and our Nathan the Abethin whenever our Simeon Begamaliel entered all the people stood up for him when our Meir and our Nathan entered all the people stood up for them also said our Simeon Begamaliel should there be no distinction between my office and theirs and so he issued that ordinance our Meir and our Nathan were not present on that day coming on the following day and seeing that the people did not rise for them as usual they inquired as to what had happened on being told that our Simeon Begamaliel had issued that ordinance, our Meir said to our Nathan, I am the Hincom and you are the Abhatin, let us retaliate now, how are we to proceed against him, let us request him to discourse upon the tractate of Oxen with which he is unfamiliar, and as he will be unable to discourse upon it, we shall tell him who can express the mighty acts of the Lord, make all his praise to he heard, for whom is it becoming to express the mighty acts of the Lord? For him who can make all his praise to he heard, we shall then depose him, and I shall become a Bethin, and you the Nasi are Jacob B. Korshai on hearing this conversation said the matter might God forbid lead to the Nasi's disgrace, so he went and sat down behind our Simeon Begamaliel's study, expounding the tractate of Oxen and repeating it again and again, he said, What could this mean? Did anything God forbid happen at the college? He concentrated his attention and familiarized himself with it on. The following day when they said to him will the master come and discourse on oxen he began and discoursed upon it after he had finished he said to them had I not familiarized myself with it you would have disgraced me he gave the order and they were removed from the college thereupon they wrote down scholastic difficulties on slips of paper which they threw into the college that which he solved was disposed of and as to those which he did not solve they wrote down the answers and threw them. In set our Jose to them the Torah is without and we are within set our Simeon Begamaliel to them we shall readmit them but impose upon them this penalty that no traditional statement shall be reported in their names as a result our Meir was designated others and our Nathan some say in their dreams they received a message to go and pacify our Simeon Begamaliel our Nathan went our Meir did not for he said dreams are of no consequence when our Nathan came our Simeon Begamaliel remarked to him the honorable Position of your father has indeed helped you to become a Bethin. Shall we therefore make you also Nasi? Rabbi taught his son Arsimian. Others say that if it had been an exchange beast Talmud, Mas Horeth, it would not have been sacrificed. The latter said to him, Who are those whose waters we drink but whose names we do not mention? Rabbi answered him, These are men who wish to uproot your dignity and the dignity of your father's house. His son said to him, As well, their love as their hatred. And their envy is long ago perished. Rabbi said to him, The enemy has disappeared. The swords are forever. The other said to him, This applies only to the case where their actions were successful. In the case of these rabbis, however, their actions were not successful. Subsequently, he repeated his lesson as follows. It was said in the name of Armeir that if it had been an exchange beast, it would not have been sacrificed. Rabbi said, Even Rabbi who was unassuming used the express sign, it was said in it. Name of Armeir and did not say Armeir said Aryohan and said on the following point there is a difference of opinion between Arsimi and Begamaliel and the rabbis one view is that a well-read scholar is superior to the keen dialectician and the other view is that the keen dialectician is superior our Joseph was a well-read scholar rabbi was a keen dialectician and inquiry was sent up to Palestine who of these should take precedence they sent them word in reply well-read scholar is to take precedence for the master said all are dependent on the owner of the wheat our Joseph nevertheless did not accept office rabbi was head for 22 years and only after this period did our Joseph take up the office throughout the years of rabbi's rectorship rabbi Joseph did not call to his house even a cover of a rabbi Arzara and rabbi Matino once sat studying together and felt the need to appoint a head they agreed that whosoever would make a statement which could not be refuted shall Become head the statements of all of them were refuted but that of Abbe was not when Rabbi saw that Abbe held up his head he called out to him Namani begin and say something the question was asked between Arzara and Rabbi son of Armatino which is the superior Arzara was keen with but undecided while Rabbi son of Armatino was slow but able to arrive at conclusions now what is the answer this must remain undecided Mishnah Masaduya chapter Mishnah Shammai says for all women who become menstruous it suffices to reckon their uncle Anes from the time of their discovering it and Hillel says their uncle Anes is reckoned backwards from the last examination to the previous examination even if this covers many days but the sages say neither according to the opinion of the one nor according to the opinion of the other but they are considered unclean for the past 24 hours when this lessens the period from the last examination to the previous Examination and for the period from the last examination to the previous examination when this lessens the past 24 hours any woman who has a settled period it suffices to reckon her uncle Anes from her set time she who uses testing cloths when she has marital connection low this is like an examination it lessens either the period of the past 24 hours or the period from the last examination to the previous examination Mishnah Shammai says do of a cab or more is subject to the law of Hala and Hillel says of two kbs or more but the sages say neither according to the opinion of the one nor according to the opinion of the other but do of a cab and a half is subject to the law of Hala and after they increase the measures they said do of five quarters is subject our Jose said five are exempt five and more are liable Mishnah Hillel says a handful of drawn water renders the unfit how be it a man must speak in the language of his teacher. And Shammai says non kabs but the sages say neither according to the opinion of the one nor according to the opinion of the other but when two weavers from the dung gate which is in Jerusalem came and testified in the name of Shimei and Abtalian three logs of drawn water rendered the mikway unfit the sages confirmed their statement Mishnah and why do they record the opinions of Shammai and Hillel to set them aside to teach the following generations that a man should not always persist in his opinion for behold the fathers of the world did not persist in their opinion Mishnah and why do they record the opinion of a single person among the many when the halasha must be according to the opinion of the many so that if a court prefers the opinion of a single person it may depend on him for no court may set aside the decision of another court unless it is greater than it in wisdom and in number if it was greater than it in wisdom but not in number in number but not in wisdom it May not set aside its decision unless it is greater than it in wisdom and in number mission. Our Judah said, If so, why do they record the opinion of a single person among the many to set it aside so that if a man shall say, Thus have I learned the tradition, it may be said to him according
Silver for three dinars and copper coin for one dinar. Our Akiba says silver for three dinar. I and for the fourth silver and for the fourth thereof copper coin. Our Tarfan says four as percent silver. Shamai says he must leave tea in a shop and eat on the credit thereof. Mission of bride stool from which the covering boards have been taken. Beth Shamai pronounced liable to become unclean and Beth Hillel pronounced it not liable to become unclean. Shamai says even the framework of a stool by itself. Is liable to become unclean. A stool which has been set in a baker's trough. Beth Shamai pronounced liable to become unclean and Beth Hillel pronounced it not liable to become unclean. Shamai says even one made therein. Is liable to become unclean. Mission of these are subjects concerning which Beth Hillel turned and taught according to the opinion of Beth Shamai, a woman who came from the region of the sea and said my husband died may be married again. My husband died without issue. She must. Be married by her husband's brother. This is the opinion of Beth Shammai, but Beth Hillel say we have heard so only in the case of one who came from the harvesting. Beth Shammai said to them it is the same thing in the case of one who came from the harvesting or who came from the olive picking or who came from the region of the sea. They mentioned harvesting only as an actual occurrence. Then Beth Hillel turned and taught according to Beth Shammai. Beth Shammai say she may be married again and take her marriage portion. But Beth Hillel say she may be married again but may not take her marriage portion. Beth Shammai said to them you have pronounced lawful the greater matter of a forbidden marriage. Should you not pronounce lawful the lighter matter of property? Beth Hillel said to them we have found that brothers do not inherit on her statement. Beth Shammai said to them do we not infer it from her marriage document in which he writes for her that if you be married to another you shall take what? Is written for you then Beth Hillel turned and taught according to the opinion of Beth Shammai Mishnah whoever is half a slave and half a free man should toil one day for his master and one day for himself this is the opinion of Beth Hillel Beth Shammai said to them you have set matters in order as regards his master but you have not set matters in order as regards himself he is not able to marry a bondmaid nor is he able to marry a woman who is free as he to refrain from marrying and is it not the case that the world was created for the propagation of the race for it is said he created it not to be a waste he formed it to be inhabited but for the rightful ordering of the world his master is compelled to make him free and he writes out a bond for half his value then Beth Hillel turned and taught according to the opinion of Beth Shammai Mishnah a vessel of earth and where can according to the opinion of Beth Hillel protect everything in it from impurity but Beth Shammai say it Protects only Edebless and liquids and other vessels of earth and where Beth Hillel said to them why Beth Shammai said to them because it is itself impure with respect to an am high rez and no impure vessel can screen against impurity Beth Hillel said to them and did you not pronounce pure the Edebless and liquids inside it Beth Shammai said to them when we pronounce pure the Edebless and liquids inside it we pronounce them pure for him only but when you pronounce the vessel pure you pronounce it pure for yourself and for him and Beth Hillel turned and taught according to the opinion of Beth Shammai Mishnah Masaduya chapter Mishnah Arhan and the chief of the priests testified concerning four matters through all their days the priests never shrank from burning flesh which had been defiled by an offspring of defilement with flesh which had been defiled by a father of defilement although they were thereby increasing its defilement by a higher defilement are added. Through all their days the priests never shrank from lighting oil which had been rendered unfit by a tea bull yum in a lamp defiled by one who was defiled by a corpse although they were thereby increasing its defilement by a higher defilement mission our hand and the chief of the priests said all my days I never saw a hide taken out to the place of burning our Akiba said from his words we infer that whoso flays the hide of the firstborn beast and it is found to be trifle the priests may enjoy the use of the hide but the sages say we saw not is no proof but such a hide must be taken out to the place of burning mission also he testified concerning a small village in the vicinity of Jerusalem in which there was an old man who used to lend to all the people of the village and write out the bond in his own handwriting and others signed it that when the fact was brought before the sages they pronounced it legal hence incidentally you may infer that the wife may write her own bill of divorcement and the husband may write his own quittance for the legality of a document depends only on those who sign it and he testified concerning a needle which was found in flesh that the knife and the hands which had been employed on the flesh are clean but the flesh itself is defiled and if it was found in the excrement all are clean mission our Ishmael declared three things before the sages in the vineyard at Yebna concerning an egg which was beaten together and placed on vegetables of terima that it acts as a connection but if it was in the form of a helmet it does not act as a connection and concerning an ear of corn in the harvesting the top of which reached the standing corn that if it can be reaped together with the standing corn low it belongs to the owner and if not it belongs to the poor and concerning a small garden which was surrounded by espalier vines that if it has space for the grape gatherer and his basket on one side and space for the grape gatherer and his basket on the other side it may be sown with seed but if not it may not be sown with seed Mishnah they stated three things before our Ishmael and he pronounced none of them either unlawful or lawful but our Joshua the son of Matthew elucidated them whoso cuts an abscess on the Sabbath he is guilty if it was to make an opening to it but innocent if it was to bring out the pus and concerning one who hunts a snake on the Sabbath that if he was thus occupied in order that it should not bite him he is innocent but if that he might use it as a remedy he is guilty and concerning irony and stew pots that they do not contract defilement when under the same roof space as a corpse but become defiled if they are carried by one who has an issue our Eliezer Bezotic says also if they are carried by one who has an issue they remain undefiled because they are unfinished in the making Mishnah our Ishmael declared three things and our Akiva disagreed with him if garlic or unripe grapes or green ears of corn were being crushed on the eve of the Sabbath while it is yet day, our Ishmael says he may allow the crushing to be completed after it grows dark, but our Akiva says he may not allow it to be completed. Mishnah they declare three things before our Akiva two in the name of our Eliezer and one in the name of our Joshua two in the name of our Eliezer a woman may go forth on the Sabbath adorned with a golden city and they that fly pigeons are unfit to bear evidence and one in the name of our Joshua if there was a creeping thing in the mouth of a weasel when it walked over loaves of terima and it is doubtful whether it touched them or whether it did not touch them that about which there is doubt remains clean. Mishnah our Akiva declared three things about two they agreed with him and about one they disagreed with him about a lime burner sandal that it is liable to contract defilement from pressure uncle Anes, and about the remains of a broken oven that they must beforehand bread tie in order to Retain the defilement whereas they used to say three and they agreed with him and about one they disagreed with him about a stool from which two of its covering boards had been removed the one beside the other which our Akiva pronounces liable to Uncle Anes but the sages declare not liable to Uncle Anes Mishnah he used to say the father transmits to the son comeliness and strength and wealth and wisdom and years and the number of generations before him that he shall become their appointed end. For it is said calling the generations from the beginning although it is said and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years it is said also and in the fourth generation they shall come hither again Mishnah also he used to say there are five things of the duration of twelve months the judgment of the generation of the flood continued twelve months the judgment of Job continued twelve months the judgment of the Egyptians continued twelve months the judgment of God. And Magog in the time to come will continue twelve months the judgment of the ungodly in Gehenna continues twelve months for it is said and it will be from one month until its same month are Yohanan Binuri says as long as from Passover to Pentecost for it is said and from one Sabbath until its next Sabbath Mishnah, Masatuya chapter Mishnah in the case of all things which caused defilement in a tent if they were divided and brought into the house are Dosa Bihar Kainis pronounces everything under the same roof space clean but the sages pronounce it unclean how is this he who touches as much as two halves of an olive in quantity of a carcass or carries them or in the case of a corpse he who touches as much as half an olive and stands over as much as half an olive or touches as much as half an olive and as much as half an olive is above him or if he stands over as much as two halves of an olive or if he stands over as much as half an olive and as much as half an olive is above him or dosa bihar kindness pronounces him clean and the sages pronounce him unclean but if he touches as much as half an olive in quantity and another thing was over him and over as much as
of Ardosa, but the sages say five views are subject whatever their fleeces weigh mission. All mats are liable to become defiled by corpse defilement. This is the opinion of Ardosa, but the sages say also by pressure defilement. No network articles are liable to Uncle Anas except a network girdle. This is the opinion of Ardosa, but the sages say they are all liable to Uncle Anas except those used by wool dealers. Misha a sling whose pocket is woven is liable to Uncle Anas if it is of skin. Ardosa Bihar Kinas pronounces it not liable to Uncle Anas, and the sages pronounce it liable to Uncle Anas if its finger hold is broken off. It is not liable, but if the string handle only is broken off, it is liable to Uncle Anas. Mission a female captive may eat of Terramoth. This is the opinion of Ardosa Bihar Kinas, but the sages say there is a female captive who may eat, and there is a female captive who may not eat. How is this the woman who said I was made a captive, but nonetheless I I am pure she may eat because the evidence which made it unlawful is the same evidence which made it lawful but if there are witnesses who declare that she was made a captive and she says nonetheless I am pure she may not eat mission four cases of doubt are Joshua pronounces unclean and the sages pronounce them clean how is this if the unclean person stands and the clean person passes by him or if the clean person stands and the unclean person passes by him or if impurity is in private premises and something clean is in public premises or if something clean is in private premises and impurity is in public premises if it is doubtful whether one touched or did not touch the other or if it is doubtful whether one stood over or did not stand over the other or if it is doubtful whether one moved or did not move the other are Joshua pronounces such a case unclean and the sages pronounce it clean mission of three things are Zodic pronounces unclean and the sages pronounce them clean it. Nail of the money changer and the chest of grist makers and the nail of a stone dial Arzadik pronounces unclean and the sages pronounce them clean. Mission four things Rabban Gamaliel pronounces unclean and the sages pronounce them clean. The covering of a metal basket if it belongs to householders and the hanger of curry combs and the vessels of metal still unshaped and a plate that is divided into two equal parts and the sages agree with Rabban Gamaliel in the case of a plate that was divided into two parts one large and one small that the large one is liable to Uncle Anes and the small one is not liable to Uncle Anes. Mission in three cases Rabban Gamaliel pronounces a rigorous ruling according to the opinion of Betchamai one may not wrap up hot food on a festival for the Sabbath and one may not join together a lamp on a festival and one may not bake on festivals thick loaves but only way for cakes Rabban Gamaliel said in all their days my father's house never baked. Large loaves, but only way for cakes. They said to him, What can we do as regards your father's house? For they were rigorous in respect to themselves, but were lenient towards Israel to let them bake both large loaves and white bread. Mission also he declared three decisions of a lenient character. One may sweep up on a festival between the couches and put spices on the coals on a festival and roast a kid whole on the night of Passover. But the sages forbid the mission. Our Eliezer B. Ezra allows three things, and the sages forbid them. His cow used to go out with the strap which she had between her horns. One may curry cattle on a festival, and one may grind pepper in its own mill. Our Judah says one may not curry cattle on a festival because it may cause a wound, but one may comb them. But the sages say one may not curry them, neither may one comb them. Mission. Masaduya chapter mission. The following cases are examples of the lenient rulings of Beth and of the rigorous rulings of Beth an egg which is laid on a festival Beth Shammai say it may be eaten and Beth say it may not be eaten Beth Shammai say leaven as much as an olive in quantity and leaven food as much as a date and Beth say as much as an olive in quantity in both cases Mishnah a beast which was born on a festival all agree that it is permitted and a chicken which was hatched from the egg all agree that it is forbidden he who slaughters a wild animal or a bird on a festival Beth Shammai say he may dig with a prong tool and cover up the blood but Beth say he may not slaughter unless he has had earth made ready but they agree that if he did slaughter he should dig with a prong tool and cover up the blood and that the ashes of a stove count as made ready Mishnah Beth say produce made ownerless with respect to the poor only I counted as ownerless but Beth say it is not counted as ownerless unless it is made ownerless also with respect to the rich as in the year of release if all the sheep of the field were of one cow each and one was of four kabs and it was forgotten Beth Shammai say it does not count as forgotten and Bethel say it counts as forgotten Mishnah a sheep which was close to a wall or to a stack or to the herd or to field utensils and was forgotten Beth Shammai say it does not count as forgotten and Beth say it counts as forgotten Mishnah a vineyard of the fourth year Beth Shammai say it is not subject to the law of the fifth nor to the law of removal and Beth say it is subject to the law of the fifth and to the law of removal Beth Shammai say it is subject to the law of fallen grapes and to the law of gleanings and the poor redeem them for themselves but Beth say all of it goes to the one press Mishnah Beth Shammai say one need not perforate a barrel of pickled OLBES and Beth say one must perforate it but they agree that if it was perforated and the dregs Stopped it up, it is not liable to Uncle Anas who so had anointed himself with clean oil and then became unclean and he went down and immersed himself. Beth Shammai say, although he still drips, it is clean and Beth say, only while there remains enough for anointing a small limb and if from the beginning it was unclean oil, Beth Shammai say, it is unclean as long as there remains only enough for anointing a small limb and Beth say, even if there remains as much as a moist liquid are. Judah says in the name of Beth provided it remains moist itself and can also moisten other things. Mission a woman is betrothed by a dinar or the value of a dinar according to the opinion of Beth Shammai, but Beth say, by a parata or the value of a parata and how much is a parata one eighth of an Italian is or Beth say, one may dismiss his wife with an old bill of divorcement and Beth forbid it what is an old bill of divorcement whensoever he has had privacy. With her after he has written it for her who so divorces his wife and she afterwards spends a night with him at the same in Beth Shammai say she does not require a second bill of divorcement from him but Beth Hillel say she requires a second bill of divorcement from him when does she require a second bill of divorcement when she was divorced after marriage but if she was divorced after betrothal she does not require from him a second bill of divorcement since he is not yet familiar. With her mission of Beth Shammai permit the rival wives of a deceased brother to be married to the surviving brothers but Beth Hillel forbid them if they have performed Hillel's Beth Shammai pronounce them unfit to marry into the priesthood but Beth Hillel pronounce them fit if they have married their brother-in-law Beth Shammai pronounce them fit and Beth Hillel pronounce them unfit to marry into the priesthood and although these pronounced unfit those whom the others pronounced fit. Beth Shammai did not shrink from marrying women from the daughters of the school of Hillel nor the school of Hillel from marrying women from the daughters of the school of Shammai and in the case of all matters of purity and impurity in respect to which these used to pronounce clean what the others pronounced unclean they did not shrink from preparing foods requiring a condition of purity each by means of the vessels of the other mission in the case of three brothers of whom two were married to two sisters and one was unmarried if one of the husbands of the sisters died and the unmarried one betrothed her and afterwards his other brother died Beth Shammai say his wife remains with him and the other widow is released on the grounds of the law of the wife's sister but Beth Hillel say he should put away his wife with a bill of divorcement and Eliza and the wife of his brother he should put away with Eliza this it is of which they have said woe to him because of his Wife and woe to him because of his brother's wife Mishnah who so forbids his wife by vow to have intercourse Beth Shammai say she must suffer it for two weeks and Beth Hillel say for one week who so has a miscarriage on the night of the 81st day Beth Shammai release her from the offering but Beth Hillel do not release her a linen wrapper Beth Shammai release it from the law of the fringe but Beth Hillel do not release it a basket of fruit set apart for the Sabbath Beth Shammai release it from tithes but Beth Hillel do not release it Mishnah who so vowed to keep a longer Nazarite ship than ordinary and he completed his Nazarite ship and afterwards came to the Holy Land Beth Shammai say he must be a Nazi right only 30 days but Beth Hillel say he must be a Nazi right the full time vow is in the beginning who so has two groups of witnesses who testify about him these testifying that he vowed two Nazarite ships and these testifying that he vow
Cite six instances of lenient rulings by Beth Shammai and rigorous rulings by Beth Hillel according to the opinion of Beth Shammai. A fowl may be brought up on the table together with cheese but may not be eaten with it. But Beth Hillel say it may neither be brought up together with it nor eaten with it according to the opinion of Beth Shammai. Olives may be given as terimoth royal and grapes for wine but Beth Hillel say they may not be given. Beth Shammai say whoso sows within four. Cubits of a vineyard has caused one row of vines to be prohibited, but Beth Hillel say he has caused two rows to be prohibited. Flower paste Beth Shammai exempt from the law of Hallel, but Beth Hillel pronounce it liable. One may immerse oneself in a rain torrent according to the opinion of Beth Shammai, but Beth Hillel say one may not immerse oneself therein if one became a proselyte on the eve of Passover. Beth Shammai say he may immerse himself and eat his Passover sacrifice in the evening. But Beth Hillel say whoso separates himself from uncircumcision is as one who separates himself from the grave. Mishnah Arishmael cites three instances of lenient rulings by Beth Shammai and rigorous rulings by Beth Hillel. The book of Ecclesiastes does not defile the hands according to the opinion of Beth Shammai, but Beth Hillel say it defiles the hands. Water of purification which has done its duty. Beth Shammai pronounce clean, but Beth Hillel pronounce it unclean. Black common Beth Shammai. Pronounce not liable to become unclean, but Bethilel pronounce it liable to become unclean. So too, with regard to tithes, Mishnah Arlizer cites two instances of lenient rulings by Beth Shammai and rigorous rulings by Bethilel. The blood of a woman after childbirth who has not immersed herself, Beth Shammai say it is like her spittle and her urine, but Bethilel say it causes defilement whether wet or dry. However, they agree in the case of the blood of a woman who brought forth when she had an issue that it causes defilement whether wet or dry. Mishnah in the case of four brothers of whom two were married to two sisters, if those married to the sisters died low, these should perform halizah and not marry the brothers in law. If the latter bestirred themselves and married them, they must put them away. Arlizer says in the name of Beth Shammai they may keep them, but Bethilel say they must put them away. Mishnah Akibiyah Bimahalil testified concerning four things they said to. Imachi be withdraw these four things which you say and we will make you father of the court in Israel. He said to them, It is better for me to be called a fool all my days than that I should become even for one hour a wicked man in the sight of God. And let not men say he withdrew his opinions for the sake of getting power. He used to pronounce unclean the hair which has been left over in leprosy and yellow blood. But the sages declared them clean. He used to permit the hair of the firstling which was blemished and which had fallen out and had been put in a window. The firstling being slaughtered afterwards. But the sages forbid it. He used to say, A woman proselyte and a manumitted bond woman are not made to drink of the water of bitterness. But the sages say they are made to drink. They said to him, It happened in the case of Carcamith, a manumitted bond woman who was in Jerusalem. Echimea and Abtalion made her to drink. He said to them, In simulation only they made her to drink. Whereupon. They excommunicated him and he died while he was under excommunication and the court stoned his coffin. Our Judah said God forbid to say that Achibia was excommunicated for the temple court was never closed in the face of any man in Israel who was equal to Achibia be Mahalil in wisdom and the fear of sin but whom did they excommunicate Eliezer the son of Enoch who demurred against the laws concerning the purifying of the hands and when he died the court sent and laid a stone on his coffin this teaches that whoever is excommunicated and dies while under excommunication his coffin is stoned mission in the hour of his death he said to his son withdraw the four opinions which I used to declare and he said to him why did not you withdraw them he said to him I heard them from the mouth of the many and they heard the contrary from the mouth of the many I stood fast by the tradition which I heard and they stood fast by the tradition which they heard but you have heard my tradition from the mouth of a single individual and their tradition from the mouth of the many it is better to leave the opinion of the single individual and to hold by the opinion of the many he said to him father commend me to your colleagues he said to him I will not commend you he said to him have you found in me any wrong he said no your own deeds will cause you to be near and your own deeds will cause you to be far Mishnah Masaduya chapter Mishnah Arjuna be Baba testified concerning five things that women who are minors are made to declare in a moment of their marriage that a woman is allowed to remarry on the evidence of one witness that a cock was stoned in Jerusalem because it had killed a human being and about one forty days old that it was used as a libation on the altar and about the continual offering of the morning that it is offered at the fourth hour Mishnah Arjashu and Arnihunya be Elanathan a man of far habibly testified concerning a limb from a corpse that it is Unclean whereas our Eliezer says they declared this only of a limb from a living man they said to him is not there an inference from the minor to the major if in the case of a living man who is himself clean a limb severed from him is unclean how much more in the case of a corpse which is itself unclean should a limb severed from it be unclean he said to them they have nevertheless declared it only of a limb from a living man another answer is the defilement of living man is greater than the defilement of corpses because a living man causes what is under him to become a couch and a seed for the purpose of defiling another man and his garments and he causes also what is over him to become a non-contiguous medium for the purpose of defiling foods and liquids which is defilement that a corpse does not cause mission and olives quantity of flesh severed from a limb of a living man our Eliezer pronounces unclean and our Joshua and our Nehunya pronounce clean a barley grains Quantity of bone severed from a limb of a living man are Nihunya pronounces unclean and Arlizer and Arjashu pronounce clean. They said to Arlizer, What reason have you found for pronouncing unclean and olives quantity of flesh severed from a limb of a living man? He said to them, We find that a limb from a living man is like an entire corpse, as in the case of a corpse and olives quantity of flesh severed from it is unclean, so also in the case of a limb from a living man and olives quantity of flesh severed from it must be unclean. They said to him, No, when you pronounce unclean and olives quantity of flesh severed from a corpse, it is because you have pronounced unclean a barley grains quantity of bone severed from it. But how can you also pronounce unclean and olives quantity of flesh severed from a limb of a living man, seeing that you have pronounced clean a barley grains quantity of bone severed from it? They said to Arnihunya, What reason have you found for pronouncing unclean? A Barley grains quantity of bone severed from a limb of a living man he said to them we find that a limb from a living man is like an entire corpse as in the case of a corpse a barley grains quantity of bone severed from it is unclean so also in the case of a limb from a living man a barley grains quantity of bone severed from it must be unclean they said to him no when you pronounce unclean a barley grains quantity of bone severed from a corpse it is because you have pronounced unclean and olives quantity of flesh severed from it but how can you also pronounce unclean a barley grains quantity of bone severed from a limb of a living man seeing that you have pronounced clean and olives quantity of flesh severed from it they said to our Eliezer, what reason have you found for dividing your standards either pronounce them both unclean or pronounce them both clean he said to them greater is the defilement of flesh than the defilement of bones for the defilement of flesh applies both to Carcasses and to creeping things, but it is not so in the case of bones. Another answer is a limb which has on it the proper quantity of flesh causes defilement by touching and by carrying and by being under the same roof space. If the flesh is diminished, it is still unclean, while if the bone is diminished, it is clean. They said to Arnihunya, What reason have you found for dividing your standards? Either pronounce them both unclean or pronounce them both clean. He said to them, Greater is it. Defilement of bones and the defilement of flesh for flesh severed from a living man is clean, whereas a limb severed from him while in its natural condition is unclean. Another answer is an olive's quantity of flesh causes defilement by touching and by carrying and by being under the same roof space, and a majority of a dead man's bones causes defilement by touching and by carrying and by being under the same roof space. If flesh is diminished, it is clean, but if a majority of the bones is Diminished, although it does not cause defilement by being under the same roof space, it it causes defilement by touching and by carrying another answer is any flesh of a corpse less than an olive's quantity is clean, but bones forming the greater portion of the body's built or the greater portion of the number of the corpse's bones, even though they do not fill a quarter cap are yet unclean. They said to our Joshua, What reason have you found for pronouncing them both clean? He said to them, No when you pronounce unclean in the case of a corpse, it is because the rules of majority
Unclean whereas our Eliezer had pronounced them clean our Papias testified concerning one who had vowed two Nazarite ships that if he cut his hair after the first one on the thirtieth day he could cut his hair after the second one on the sixteenth day though if he cut his hair on the fifty ninth day he has also discharged his duty for the thirtieth day is credited to him towards the required number mission our Joshua and our Papias testified concerning the young of a peace offering that it could be brought as a peace offering whereas our Eliezer says that the young of a peace offering could not be brought as a peace offering but the sages say it may be brought our Papias said I testify that we had a cow ate peace offering and we ate it as Passover and its young we ate as a peace offering at the next festival mission the same testified concerning the boards of bakers that they are liable to become unclean whereas our Eliezer declares them not liable to become unclean the same testified Concerning an oven which was cut into rings and sand was put between one ring and the other ring that it is liable to become unclean whereas our Eliezer declares it not liable to become unclean the same testified that the year may be intercalated throughout the whole of Adar whereas they used to say only till Purim the same testified that the year may be intercalated conditionally there was such a case with Rabban Gamaliel who went to take authorization from the governor in Syria and he delayed in coming back and they intercalated the year on condition that Rabban Gamaliel should approve and when he came back he said I approve and the year was there by duly intercalated mission of Menahem be testified concerning the ledge attached to an olive boiler's cauldron that it is liable to become unclean and concerning that of dyers that it is not liable to become unclean whereas they used to say the rule is the reverse mission Arnihun the son of Gajada testified concerning a deaf mute whose father had given her in marriage that she could be put away with a bill of divorcement and concerning a minor daughter of an Israelite and married to a priest that she might eat terima and if she died her husband inherited from her and concerning a stolen beam that had been built into a palace that it might be restored by the payment of its value and concerning a sin offering that had been stolen and this was not known to many that it made due atonement because of the welfare of the altar Mishnah, Masaduya chapter Mishnah our Joshua Bibathera testified concerning the blood of carcasses that it was clean our Simeon Bibathera testified concerning the ashes of purification that if a defiled person had touched part thereof he had defiled the whole of them our Akiba added in regard to the fine flour the incense the frankincense and the coals that if a tibulyam had touched part thereof he had made the whole of them unfit Mishnah our Judah Bibaba and our Judah the priest Testified concerning a minor, the daughter of an Israelite, and married to a priest, that she could eat terima as soon as she entered the bridal chamber, even though she had no marital intercourse. Our Jose the priest and our Zechariah Bihakazab testified concerning a young girl who had been given as a security in Ashkelon, and whom the members of her family had put away, though her witnesses testified fled for her that she had not secluded herself with any man, and that she had not been defiled. That the sages said to them, If you believe that she was given as a security, believe also that she did not seclude herself with any man, and that she was not defiled. And if you do not believe that she did not seclude herself, and that she was not defiled, neither believe that she was given as a security. Mission our Joshua and our Judah the son of Bethera testified concerning the widow of a man belonging to a family of doubtful purity, that she was fit to marry into the priesthood since a family of doubtful. Purity was fit to declare who was unclean and who clean who was to be put away and who was to be brought near Rabban Gamaliel said we accept your testimony but what can we do since Rabban Yohan and Bizakai ordained that courts should not be commissioned for this purpose the priests would listen to you concerning those who might be put away but not concerning those who might be brought near Mishnah our Jose B. Joazer a man of Zir to testify concerning the AYIL locust that it is clean and concerning liquid in the slaughterhouse that it is clean and that one who touches a corpse is unclean and they called him Jose the permitter Mishnah our Akiva testified in the name of Nehemiah a man of Beth Delhi that a woman is allowed to remarry on the evidence of one witness our Joshua testified concerning bones found in the woodshed that they were unclean that the sages said one may gather them up bone by bone and all is clean Mishnah our Eliezer said I have heard that when they built it Temple they made hangings for the temple and hangings for the temple courts but in the case of the temple they built from the outside and in the case of the temple court they built from the inside our Joshua said I have heard that sacrifices may be offered even though there is no temple and that the most holy sacrifices may be eaten even though there are no hangings and the lesser holy sacrifices and second times even though there is no wall because the first sanctification was valid both for its own time and for the time hereafter mission our Joshua said I have received the tradition from Rabbi Yohan and Bizakai who heard it from his teacher and his teacher heard it from his teacher as a halacha given to Moses from Sinai that Elijah will not come to pronounce unclean or to pronounce clean to put away or to bring near but to put away those brought near by force and to bring near those put away by force the family of Beth Zerubbabel was on the other side of the Jordan and Ben Zion put it away by force and yet another family was there and Benzion brought it near by force such like Elijah will come to pronounce unclean or to pronounce clean to put away or to bring near our Judah says to bring near but not to put away our Simeon says to conciliate disputations and the sages say neither to put away nor to bring near but to make peace in the world for it is said behold I sent to you Elijah the prophet etc and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers.